Good to be back in Memphis. All praises to the Most High God. Well, today we're going to discuss a few things. Uh, the topic is called Pray and Plan for What's to Come. Write that down. Pray and Plan for What's to Come. Now, we like topics like that. I know brothers like those uh, type of uh, prof- prophetic classes. But before we can get to the prophetic understanding of the scriptures, we got to do one thing first and foremost, and that's self-examine. We got to lo- learn to examine ourselves. Who's uh, on IT? Elisha? All right. You got work to do today. You got work to do. IT has a thankless job, but I'm thanking you in advance. Please forgive me if I cuss you out. So I'm saying all that in advance. All praises. Let's open up with Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 40. Who's reading for me? Captain, get a lie, Bishop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bishop, you don't want me to read for you? No. <laughs> <laughs> What verse you want, Bishop? Lamentations 3? Lamentations 3 and 40. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 4. My flesh and my skin have he made old. He have broken my bones. He have built it against me and compassed me with gall and travail. He have set me in dark places as they that be dead of old. He have hedged me about that I cannot... Lamentations 3 and 40. 4D, sorry. Lamentation 3, verse 40. All right. Let's start one more again. One <laughs> yes, more sir. Again. Yes, sir. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us search and try our ways. That's for each man and every woman to do. You got to search your ways. You got to try your ways. That's called self-examination. Another man can't do it for you. Sometimes he can, we can look at you or get to know you and know what you need to work on. But you know before we know what you need to work on. Read on. Verse 41. Lift, let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. And let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. Give me 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-eight. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Now we read that every Sabbath. Every Sabbath we read that. Am I right? Yes, sir. All right. But the first part is what we need to consider. But let a man examine who? Himself. Himself. Let a man examine himself. That's something some brothers have not learned to do. Or not even so much don't haven't learned to do. Don't want to do. Read it again. Yes, sir. First Corinthians 11 and 28. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So we are to examine ourselves. In this truth, it's all about self-examination. When you come into this truth, if you don't know how to do that, sit down, take stock of yourself. Write down your good points. Write down your bad points. Write down the pros and cons of what you do, where you are in your life. Okay? Give me um, 2 Corinthians 13.5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Where's the sisters at? There ain't no sisters here. Y- y'all made them stay home? Okay. Okay, we're going to see how that go. Sisters, it was not me. I didn't do it. It's Captain O'Shea did that thing. Go ahead. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves. Stop. Read it again. Examine yourselves. One more again. Examine yourselves. So examine yourselves. Go ahead. Whether ye be in the faith. You know if you're in the faith or not. Some of you are in here just faking the funk. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Like we put up that thing a couple of weeks ago. 5% of the people love a revolutionary. 5%. 10% hate that revolutionary. 
85% don't give a damn. They're just here. That always stuck in my mind. When I read that thing, when I meditate on that, I know how true it is. Read it again. Yes, sir. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Read that part again. Prove your own selves. You got to prove yourselves. Brothers come up to me and say, ask me, when can I be a captain? Brother, you got to prove yourself. You should be doing the work of a captain before you're given the title or rank of a captain. You should be doing the work of an officer of 50 before you're given the exam of an officer of 50. Okay? You got to be doing the work. Read that again, the whole verse. Yes, sir. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. Prove your own self. I can't prove you. You got to prove your own self. Go ahead. Know ye not your own self. You got to know yourself. Man, know thyself. Go ahead. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. If the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus Christ, ain't in you, then you are reprobate. That means void of judgment. You don't know the pros and cons in your mind, in your soul. You don't know the pros and cons of your life, your family structure. You don't know the good or the bad that you're dealing with. There's something wrong with you. You're reprobate. Reprobate. Now, I often show, or once in a while, once I don't say often, once in a while I'll show, what is this? I'll show, uh, oh, they got this little thing up here, a little fancy round thing, and it buzzes. It shakes like that. I don't know. Make me nervous. The hell is this? Um, what was I saying? What was I saying? Once in a while, um, once in a while, I'll discuss things, and then online somebody will say that he lied. He made that up. No, I'm not lying. I don't lie, and I don't make things up. Now, I might change the names of the people so that people's feelings don't get hurt. I'll do that. Well, I might not show the picture so that people's feelings don't get hurt. So what I want to do, we're going to examine yourself. Uh, Officer Alicia, I'm def referring to you now. I want... Let me look. Let me look first because you might have it out of order. I want the first text message. I want the first text. Put it on the screen. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's it. That's it right there. Now, I crossed the name out. This was sent to my inbox a couple of weeks ago, and people were frantic, especially you sisters who are not here. Where's the camera? You, which camera am I looking at? You sisters were frantic over this. When I read it, I didn't get frantic. I don't get frantic. Let's read this. Read that, Cap. Yes, sir. Um, the first Facebook um, post is, I'm out. The second Deuces. One is, Deuces. The next one is, this is my last day on earth. What I just had to deal with at IUIC, death is way better than life. Rejection, rejection, rejection. I am no one's favorite, and depression is not a good mix. Let my blood be on IUIC. I tried. Now, right there. See there? You're not going to guilt me. That might work on Bishop Kanai. Yeah, right. <laughs> it might work on Deacon Asaph. It might work on Deacon Abiel with Care Bear. He care about everything. I don't, I don't move with threats. I don't negotiate with terrorists. You women are not going to manipulate me to do nothing with fear of death. Now, it's not that I don't care about you. It's not that at all. But I know Satan when I smell Satan. Let her blood be on IUIC. Come on now. I'm so I go, I can make a few fights. and who in the hell is this? Who is this terrorist? I want to know. Put it back up on the screen. Read on. Yes, sir. This is what the person sent me. They text this thing. This sister is in Austin, Texas. Oh, you're from Austin, Texas. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I don't know if anyone knows her or know how to reach her. I'm not in your congregation, but I believe she needs some, some righteous. Some righteous 
help. Now, when I saw Austin, Texans, I called Bishop Kanai. What'd you say? <laughs> Run, she crazy. So the very next day, the sister who we found out who it was was doing videos online. And I'm like, I thought she was killing herself. I said, you see, this terrorism got to stop. Yeah. It got to stop. That was all a play. She's, and, and again, as Bishop's saying, it's not that we are uncaring and we don't care for a sister. We're here to try to hail people with the scriptures. But you're not going to use threat of violence against yourself to move us. That's not how it works. She has years of history of psychiatric issues. And we, over the years, have tried to help her to the point there's no more helping. We can't. She needs, she needs to be medicated. And we have to remove we have, And we removed her from her body, this is well over a year ago, for the safety of the people because she began to accuse people of certain things. And she's really troubled in her mind. But that right there was to get all Israel who, she knows the game that people have a problem with us, with IUIC, for whatever reason, and she's going to play to them. So everybody gets in line, and all you sisters, oh, no, oh, don't do it. And she's typing back, I'm going to do it now. Not right now. Well, after I finish typing this, I'm going to, no, but please, come on. Stop. After I eat this hamburger. But yeah. This doesn't. Go to the next one, Elisha. Now, I got a picture, but I'm not going to put a picture up. I ain't going to put it. Some of you brothers may be catfished online. What do you mean, Bishop, by catfish? Well, I'm going to tell you what I mean by catfish. Imagine if you have a sister who looks like Captain Aria. Now, Captain Aria is a big guy. She kind of res she. She looks like Aria. <laughs> Damn. There's no reflection on Captain Aria. He's a man. But she's kind of uh, Arie-ish. Damn. So what she would do, as I found out, because I had never met her, she would send, you know, some of you, how many of you single brothers in here? Raise your hand. Okay, all, a lot of you brothers are about to get catfished in a moment. She would send pictures of other women and say, this is me. Then she would visit the school, and a brother would see her and be like, oh, sh the hell? Who are you? Who in the hell are you? That happened in New York quite a few times. You remember that in New York? New York? You remember that? Sister Yanni. Bishop, I'm about to get married to a beautiful sister from Santo Domingo. Can I see her picture? Man, she was lovely. You remember that? You remember that? Gorgeous. I said, wow. I said, and Deacon Lava said, are you, Bishop, are you sure that is her? I said, I don't think that's her. Brother said, that's her. I said, well, when's she coming to America? He goes, the next day he says, oh, her uncle took her passport. I said, her uncle took her passport. Hmm. I said, call her on the phone. I want to talk to her. He calls her on the phone. She goes, hello. <laughs> I said, Shalom. Hey, uh, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, I said, what the hell is this? What in the hell is this? <laughs> so I did a class on catfishing. And I talked about the sister. And lo and behold, the brother after class, he comes up weeping. He, he's a captain, by the way. He's a captain because he overcame. He overcame the problem. He's a captain. He overcame it. And he was weeping violently telling me I destroyed his life. I said, brother, how, in the, I said, how did I destroy your life? I was supposed to marry him. I mean, her. Yeah. I mean, it. Yeah. <laughs> he says, I sent her pictures of, of myself, and she says she's going to put it on the Internet because of the class. I said, you sent her pictures of yourself. I said, so what you send us? I said, wait a minute, stop. What do you mean you sent her pictures of yourself? You sent her pictures of downstairs? I said, she sent you pictures of herself? He goes, yeah. Let me see. He's flipping through the phone. 30 seconds go by. A minute goes by. Two minutes go by. I said, give me the damn phone. 
So I'm flipping. Uh, 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 uh. All you saw is butt cheeks, testicles, rod, breath. I said, what the hell is this? What is wrong with you? Who raised you? You got the devil on you, bro. Uh, and the brother said, uh, hey, hey, what'd you say? He, he tried to blame the daddy. He's destroying my life. I said, man, get out of here. Man, get from this podium. Move out of here. Man, we cursed this dude out. Cur- I had to curse the dude out. Brothers are stupid. I think that was a man. I'm telling you straight. Yeah, that. exactly. That's a, that's a dude. Exactly. You got catfish, my man. Now, some of you brothers might get cat- uh, off solution. Put the next. This is the same sister, by the way. I tried to redact some of the names. I think I did an okay job. It was on my phone. Uh, read that for us. This was about her because I wanted to know about her. Yes, sir. We're going to call her Sister Z. That's her name. Go ahead. Yes, sir. A Facebook post was made by an ex-IUIC Austin member, Sister Z, accusing, a.k.a. Brother Z. N- n- brother, brother Z, Z and I- Sister Z. Brother Z, <laughs> Brother Z, New York headquarters of several acts of misconduct. Sister Z has been sending him new pictures since October, November of last year, 2021. See, that's why I wanted to, I wish the sisters was here, because I know some of them are doing that right now. Mm. I know they're doing that. And them breasts you send sending ain't your breasts. She know her breasts go down to her knees. How come you sending pictures of perky breasts? Don't make your titties. Go ahead. <laughs> brother, brother, <laughs> brother Z admitted to sending and exchanging nude penis and breast photos with the sister. Now, Brother Z's doing the same thing. I, this is another kind of generation. I mean, when we was young, there was no internet. But even when it became internet, we didn't do this. Read on. Go ahead. Uh, she, she, excuse me. She also accused him of asking her for money because he was short on a bill and she gave it to him. Stop. See, this is why I need sisters to be. Sisters always get caught out there. She talking to a dude online and a dude is always broke. Hey. Find me the scripture in Sirach that says something to the effect of, uh, he if it's in Sirach six, I believe I could be wrong, mm-hmm. but it talks about if he needs you, he'll. Uh, mm, something about a dude he ain't got nothing, but he always asking. Yeah, find me that friend at the table. Sirach what? Six and eight. The, bu- the book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 8. I want you sisters to listen good. Online for, sisters, because there ain't none of you here. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. See that? See that? Read that again. Yes, sir. For some man is a friend for his own occasion and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. Some, friend, some only a friend for his own occasion. Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. And there is a friend who being... No, ter- not that one. Ten, let me a 10. Yes, sir. Verse 10. Again... Some friend is a companion at the table and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. Right. So you sisters online, because you ain't here, you always get caught up. Why you always meet the bum brother? Hey, find me the scripture every beast lover is like. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you, sister, why you always meet the bum brother. Because you's a bum. Mm. That's why you always meet the bum brother or the crackhead. You's a bum and you used to be a crackhead. Find me that, read that. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 13, verse 15. Every beast loveth his like. Every beast loveth his like. And every man loveth his neighbor. Every man loveth his neighbor. Here it comes. All flesh consorteth according to kind. And a man will cleave to his like. A man will cleave to his like. Whatever you're like, that's who cleaves to you. If he's a bum, he looks for a woman that's a bum. Or who have bumish ways or bum qualities. They're usually a desperate sister. And you could tell you, you sisters who have low self-esteem and he can use and manipulate you. So he asks for money. You never met the brother, but he, she's sending money through PayPal. Or what's that other one with the is green? Cash app. Go back to the article. I mean the article, the thing. Alicia. All right, uh, Brother Z admitted. Brother Z admitted to that as well. She also came to New York in February to visit the city. Brother Z picked her up, 
to go to IHOP. They went sightseeing, went to a Benji spot to eat, and then to her hotel. He says the only he says they only hugged and did not engage in any sexual activity. Yeah, right. After well, he, after I did see her photo, so go ahead. I'm gonna leave it alone. After, after he. After he no longer was after he no longer was speaking to her as often as he had done prior to her trip, she accused him of using her for money and lewd behavior. The sister blamed the most high for not loving her enough to give her a husband. Wait, you see that right there? The sister blamed the most high for not loving her enough to give her a husband. Give me that in first John three, I think it is. Mm, that says he will do what we ask if we keep his commandments. Yes, sir. First John three twenty two. Yes. First John chapter three verse twenty two. I want all y'all to pay attention to this. And whatsoever this we. This for you, single men too. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandment. You see that part right there. Whatsoever we ask, meaning pray for, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. Go ahead. And do those things which are that are pleasing in his sight. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now go to 1 John 5 and 14. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. If we ask anything according to God's will, he heareth us. Didn't the Lord say it is not good that man should be alone? Didn't he say that? So a wife is according to his will. It is according to his will. Didn't he say that the woman was made for the man? In 1 uh, Corinthians uh, chapter 7, 11. I think it is. 11. Give me that. Give me that. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Oh, chapter 11. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. In verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. The woman was created for the man. That's why she was created. So if she's praying for a husband, that is according to God's will. But the problem is, go back to 1 John 3, 22. Yes, sir. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 22. For whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. Because, because, because we keep his commandments. When you find yourself not keeping the commandments and you're looking for a spouse, Things tend to go wrong, and that's why some of you have backdoor marriages. Because you know if you go about it the right way, she or he will leave. Uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm not, we're, we're not compatible. So you go about it the wrong way. You grabbing breasts, she got her mouth open. Oh, give me that one about her mouth open. Yes, sir. Real quick, this is for you. Sisters on. You know what I'm talking about, right? Thirsty Travel. Yes, sir. It's Rock 26. This is for you research sisters who say oral sex is sodomy. I can't stand you women. God can't stand you. Read that. Sirach chapter 26 and verse 12. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he have found a fountain. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. When what? When he have found a fountain uh -huh. and drink of every water near her. And she will drink of every water near her. Go ahead. By every hedge will she sit down. By and, every hedge will she sit down. And open her quiver against every arrow. And open her quiver, her vagina, against every arrow. So that's talking about sex. The whole thing talking about sex. So is the problem the oral sex or is the problem she's doing it with every Tom, Dick, and Harry? What's the answer, brothers? Every Tom, Dick, and Harry. She's doing it with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. So a sister will read that, see it's in the Bible, and go, let me go to Google and see what the white man says. White man will say sodomy. She'll go, no, 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 uh, babe, babe, we can't do that because it's sodomy. Because the white, but that's not what the Bible says. And in her mind, she don't give a damn what the Bible says. I can't stand you research sisters. You hate God. You hate your husband. Shut the hell up and open your mouth. Anyway, Whew. the hell is this? Get in my damn nerves. Hey, it's like. <laughs> I think you struck a nerve, Bishop. 
I think brothers ain't getting no head because everybody clapping. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Officer, unless you're going back to the uh, read okay. the last sentence yes, you blamed. Sir. All right. Uh, sister blamed the most high for not loving her enough to give her a husband. How about she don't love the most high enough to keep his commandments and get a husband? How about that? No, it's never that. Everybody's the fault. Everybody's the blame. If it's God, now it's IUIC. Everybody's the blame. Go ahead. Sister Z was put out of, I, of IUIC Austin for lying on former Officer H, stating he was he touching was touching her and stating Deacon Malachi called her a fat pig, which was unfounded. Now, a few brothers I found out did call her a fat pig. That's because she catfished them. Then when they saw her in person, they told her, you look like a fat pig. And she got mad. I ain't going to show you his, her picture, but I do have it right here. You see that picture? Right yeah, there? yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Stop, stop, nah, stop. stop, 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 stop. No, I can't guys, show the picture. You guys, are, you guys, he's been turned up. <laughs> now, I want to say this about Malachi. Because I was there. You was there? Malachi couldn't have. I was with Malachi. Like, he, he never, she never spoke to him. They never had, not even passing like Shalom, there was no time because he was on a podium. We moved from there to where we went. So I'm like, when did this happen? For the last three hours, I was with him. We never saw her. Not that she wasn't there, but there was no time for him to even like walk to the bathroom, look and say, fat pig. There was no time for that. <laughs> Yo, she was tripping. But you know what? I'm, honestly, I don't think she's lying. I think she's so smitten with madness that she believes that it happened. She really needs help. But what we've done, we can't do more than give you scripture. Like you said, Bishop, if she's blaming the most high, what, what, that's it. You at the point of blaming God. I feel bad for her. Her mind is, her mind is gone. Her mind you is would gone. think a sister would say, let me self, I can't get a man. Right. Let me do self-examination. You brothers who can't get a woman, let me examine myself. Maybe I'm just too fat. Maybe I'm, what did Captain Shem say, a lard ass. Right. Let me lose a couple of pounds. Let me try that. Let me, maybe it's my, t remember that brother whose teeth was all jacked up? Yep. He went and got every, t t what do they call that, veneers? veneers? Man, this dude's teeth was pearly white, straight. We were like, oh, what? you can see that dude's teeth in the back of the room. Yep. And he got the woman, too. I mean, she was a demon. He wanted her, but she, you know, we, we know what I'm talking about. Yep. Going back. Come on, Alicia. All right. Um, pick it up. She also tried. She also tried to take the vow of the Nazarite and start her own camp. You see that? You see this? Also, she contacted IUIC Austin seven months ago to be allowed back in the body. Oh, no. Mm-mm. Go ahead. She was not allowed back. Brother Z has been removed from the body at headquarters until further notice. Okay. Give me the next one, Alicia. All right. This is, you read this in class a couple of weeks ago. I wanted to read it again. This is from a sister from Greenleaf. I believe it was Greenleaf. Where is she from? Was this from Greenleaf? Let's put it on Greenleaf. Let's put it on Greenleaf. Go ahead. Read that. That's Atlanta, by the way. That's Green. That's Greenleaf. Go ahead. Shalom, sis. Most high Christ bless you. This is sisters texting sisters. Shalom, sis. Most high Christ bless you. Um, a lot of thoughts about committing fornication just to get out of this marriage because it's not working. You see this? This sister wants to commit fornication just to get out of. She'll sleep with anything Damn. just to get away from her husband. Wow. Well, it's obvious she picked wrong. Or I, he picked wrong. Go ahead. I believe in the truth and want to stay in, but not with him. You see that? I believe in the truth. You see that? You can't make this stuff up. I believe in the truth and want to stay in the truth. But I want to fornicate. Yes. But not with him. Wow. Go ahead. He puts everything before me. He puts everything before. Let's examine that. He puts everything before me. Go back to Corinthians. Yes, sir. I 
Uh, and give me verse 3, chapter 11, verse 3. First Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Read it again. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head, the head of every man is Christ. Christ is our king, brothers. Not the woman. Not the woman. Let me say it again for you simps. Not the woman. Christ comes first in everything. When she gets to the point and says, you're supposed to put me before Christ, it's time to go. She's not a woman of the Lord. She's not. She's a woman of the world. Now, I know, I understand that we got to do things, balance it out when you're married. But when you realize you're putting her before the Lord, there's a problem. So evidently, this sister complained. He goes to camp too much. He does fly missions too much. Yep. He's having counsel with brothers too much. Go back and read that again. Yes, sir. But I would have you know that the head of every no, man I'm is... No, the... Oh, the... Yes, sir. The thing. All right. Um, wow. He puts everything before me. I try to be the only one in the spirit, but everything I do seems like it's wrong. So a lot of resentment and hatred towards him. Now let's examine that. I tried to be the only one in the spirit. You ever women say that? When you ask a husband and wife what's wrong, the woman never, I remember there was a sister. You know who I'm talking about. I said, sister, what's wrong? Tell me what's wrong with your husband. She had a list of issues with him. I said, tell me what's wrong with you now. That's all I want to know is you. She goes, with me? I said, yes, with you. She begins to say, well, I'm a Proverbs 31 woman. And he, and she gives the list again about him. And I'm like, some women refuse to self-examine, take accountability of themselves. Not all sisters, but 9.99% of them. That's all I'm saying. Read it again. Go back. Yes, sir. Uh, he puts everything before me. I tried to be the only one in the spirit, but everything I do seems like it's wrong. So a lot of resentment and hatred towards him. Well, how do we know whether or not that's true? Everything I do seems like it's wrong. Well, for the, number one, you opened up saying you're thinking about committing fornication. Is she in the spirit, brothers? No, sir. No, she's not in the spirit, never has been in the spirit. Read on. He doesn't want... He doesn't want marriage counseling because he thinks if we go for this, then we have to go for everything. Mm. I, th I think that's it. So one sister said, I want to go for counsel, but I don't want IUIC counseling, which is fine. She said, I want white man counseling. We had a few cases like that. You brothers that get hooked up with these sisters, I'm telling you, I feel bad for this new generation coming up in here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 9.27. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Brothers, you got to keep under your body and bring it unto subjection, just like the sisters. If you are thinking thoughts of adultery or fornication, keep your body disciplined. Read it again. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. You got to bring your body under subjection to the word of God. What verse was that? That's verse 27. Go ahead. Lest, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You don't want to be a castaway. You've been preaching to others, and you have not disciplined your own mind, your own body. Why? Because you didn't self-examine yourself. You didn't discipline your body. Give me Sirach 37, 19. Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 19. There is one that is wise and teacheth many, and yet is unprofitable to himself. Because he didn't discipline his body. He didn't keep his body under subjection to the word of God. We got to be mindful of that. Be very, very mindful. Give me Psalms 119, verse 59. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and Wait, verse 59. Hold on, let me get it. Let me yes, get sir, it. yes, sir. I ain't as fast as you. Let's go on. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Psalms chapter 119 and verse 59. I thought on my ways. I thought on my ways. What does that mean? He self-examined himself. He examined himself. Go ahead. 
And turn my feet unto thy testimonies. And turn my feet unto thy testimonies. Meaning what? He did the commandments of God. Read it again. Yes, sir. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. That's what you brothers and sisters online, you all, we all must do that. Think on our ways. Am I doing the right thing according to the scriptures? Is me thinking about fornication according to the word of God? No. Read it again. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimony. You ever notice some people? They'll think on your ways. You ever see that brother or sister? They can see everybody's fault, but I can't stand people like that. In the church, they got a lot of them. Give me that in um, Isaiah 65. It might be verse 3 yes, about sir. I'm holier than thou. That one. Yes, sir. Got you. Make me sick. Make God sick. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse. Around 2, 3. Verse 5. Okay. Thanks. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 5. Which say, stand by thyself. Come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose. God says these are a smoke in my, in my nose, meaning I can't stand people like that. they are, they just so holy. And all that goes with, give me uh, Matthew 7 about the, 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 you got a booger in your eye, but you're looking at the booger in your neighbor's eye. I'm using the word booger because that's what he said his kids. Yes, sir. You know that cold you get in the corner of your eye? Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 3. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? You're looking at the booger in your brother's eye. But considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. But you got a bigger booger in your eye. That, whole, that chapter's going into hypocrisy. Meaning, you getting on your brother about defiling the Sabbath, but you yourself are breaking the Sabbath. You getting on your brother about porn, and you know, damn well you was looking at porn last night. Or you were fornicated. That's what that's talking about. That ain't talking about don't correct your brother or sister. You know, women always say, you can't judge me. Or like the rappers, only God could judge me. Shut up. From there, give me uh, James 1 and 5. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 5. If any, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally. If you can't self-examine, you lack wisdom, you better pray to the Lord and say, Lord, give me wisdom. Read it again. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally that, and abrade it not. Right, that give it to all men liberally. He's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. That's proven in verse 1. Chapter 1. Give me Matthew 7, verse 7 and 8. Did we just read that? No, sir. We didn't read okay. 7 and 8. Go no, ahead. sir. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Pray, and it shall be given to you. Go ahead. Seek, and ye shall find. You got to seek, it says, and you shall find. Go ahead. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Was that verse 8? Verse 7. Go ahead. And verse 8 is, uh, for everyone that asketh. And everyone that prayeth. Receiveth. You shall receive. Go ahead. And he that seeketh findeth. And if you seek, you shall find. That goes into prayer. Mm -hmm. You got to pray, but you got to do those things which are pleasing in God's sight by keeping the commandments. That's what all begins right there. Did you finish verse 8? No, sir. Go ahead. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. You got to knock on God's door. Meaning you got to bug God. Lord, I need some wisdom. I'm reprobate. I'm dumb as hell, Lord. You got to humble yourself to the Lord. Now, a part of self-examining yourself, you got to, like I said earlier, you got to know, you got to know your shortcomings. You got to know your, where your strengths are. Elisha gives me the next thing about, wait, did I send it to you? Did I send you the thing about uh, bad character habits? Did I send that to you? Hold on. Hey, hey, talk. Yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Listen, uh, in Israel, especially as we come up in this truth, I was saying it earlier, when you men out there and you're correcting, you better make sure you write. Don't be coming with that energy, and when it's your turn, you can't handle it. 
Remember Galatians 6 and 1. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, lest thou be tempted. So you hear big talk, big talk, and then when the tables turn to you, you know. So back to that moat and that beam. A lot of brothers be walking around with beams in their eye, and they are super righteous. Ready to tell, ready to tell somebody all their faults, but will not examine yourself. That's what First Corinthians is talking about. The one we read, the first one we read, Lamentations is talking about. Psalms 4 and 4 is talking about. It's about looking at yourself and being honest of who you are. Yeah, Bishop, go ahead. All right, Alicia, can we put that on the screen? Now, here is a list of bad characters, bad character traits. You got to, uh, Captain Get Alive, can you read these traits? And you brothers yes. and sisters online, we're going to read this, and you got to say to yourself, self, I got that. Yep, that's me right there. Yeah, no, I don't have that one, but this one right here, yeah, that's me. Come on. Yes, sir. Um, the first trait, dishonest. Dishonest. Disloyal. Ooh, I hate this. We, 2018 was a year of disloyalty. And you know what's funny about the disloyal brothers? Some of them want to set up a, a, a congregation and think those men are going to be loyal to them. What the hell is this? They find it out right now. That ain't how the spirit work. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Unkind. Some of you brothers and sisters are unkind. Mean. Some of you men, some of you women are mean-spirited. Rude. Some of you are rude. Mm -hmm. Disrespectful. Some of you brothers, you know you're disrespectful. You know who you is. Go ahead. Impatient. Impatient. I know that's one of my qualities. Yeah, I'm kind of impatient dealing with some brothers because they get on my damn nerves. So I got to pray, Lord, give me more patience. Give me some patience. Go ahead. Greed. Oh, greed, greed, greed. There was a spirit of greed in Austin. Y'all remember that? Well, I know you remember that. A spirit of greed. Money, 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 money. And in Austin, that spirit's coming right back again. Money, money, money. Oh, you got a job, you got a business? Come work for me. But I work for brother so-and-so. I don't care, come work for me. And nobody sees this spirit coming back. You better wake up. Come on. Yes, sir. Abrasive. Abrasive. Mm, okay, come on. Pessimistic. Oh, what is pessimistic? Is that the water, the glass is half? What is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, glass is half. Then optimistic is the glass is half full. Pessimistic, the glass is half empty. Yes. Go ahead. Cruel. Some of you all are cruel. Go ahead. Unmerciful. Some people are unmerciful. Mm -hmm. Narcissistic. That's, it's all about me. Obnoxious. Oh, obnoxious. Go ahead. Malicious. Malicious. Pettiness. You, some brothers are petty. <laughs> Go ahead. Quarrelsome. Some brothers are quarrelsome. They just like to start SH. Go ahead. Caustic. I don't know what that one means. Go ahead. Selfish. Selfish. Unforgiving. Some people are unforgiving. Even about that. Now, we put people out of the school. Now, depending on what it is, we generally bring these people back. Am I right? Am I wrong? We bring you back. We don't leave you out there to die unless you're a heretic. We leave you alone unless you're a heretic, if you're a heretic. If you are on medication or need to be on medication, one of the criteria will be in order for you to come back, you get on medication. We want to see the paperwork too. You ain't going to come in and start seeing things and hearing imagine, imagine, imaginative uh, conversations that never took place. You get on medication. Seeing bunnies run across the ceiling and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Did y'all see that? What? A bunny ran across the ceiling. You better get the hell out of here. <laughs> Give me Jeremiah 17.9. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. Now, like I said, I know we all like the prophetic scriptures. But what we generally don't like is what we need. Self-examination. What about me? Because in order to get through them prophecies, we got to fix what's wrong with us. Yes, Go ahead. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. See that? In my heart, the Lord, no, no, you said your heart. No, the heart is deceitful. Go ahead. And desperately wicked. The Bible says your heart is desperately wicked. Why? Give me Mark 7, 21. The book of Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. 
For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Because in your heart is evil thoughts. That goes for all of us. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. Go ahead. Adulteries. Adulteries. Fornications. Fornications. Like the sister said, I'm thinking about committing fornication. Go ahead. Murders. Murders. Mm. Thefts. Thefts. Covetousness. Covetousness. Wickedness. Wickedness. Deceit. Deceit. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. An evil eye. An evil eye. That's when you got hate towards your neighbor. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Pride. Pride. Foolishness. Foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. That's what's in every one of us, in our heart, in our mind. That's what's in us. Christ knew that. Okay, from there. Give me Galatians 5.19. Now, the same thing Christ said in Mark 7, 21, the Apostle Paul said to the Jews in Galatia. Read that. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 19. Know the, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Now, so what's the works of the flesh? Go ahead. Adultery. Adultery. Mm. Fornication. Fornication. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Lascivi that goes with those, like porn would fall under lasciviousness. Go ahead. Idolatry. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. That goes into your horoscopes and things like that. Go ahead. Hatred. Hatred. Variance. Mm -hmm. Emulations. Emulations. Wrath. You're trying to copy somebody. Go ahead. Wrath. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Heresies. Envyings. Murders. Drunkenness. Revelings. And such like. And such like. Go ahead. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past. That they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's why we must all self-examine ourselves. Examine ourselves. Do I have these qualities in me? Read on. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Now that word love goes to the commandments. When you read 1 John 5 and 3, 2 John verse 6, John 14, 15. Love is the keeping of God's commandments. So it starts off there. Read on. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, joy, peace, peace, lo mm -hmm. long suffering, long suffering, mm -hmm. gentleness, gentleness, goodness, goodness, faith, faith, meekness, meekness, temperance, temperance. Against such there is no law. There's no law, no condemnation. You can't pull no scripture to condemn anything, somebody that has the fruits of the Spirit. Mm. That's the qualities we all must. Be transformed. Give me that one in Ephesians. Is it 4.23 or 5.23? It says about a new mind. Yes, sir. That one. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Every last one of us got to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Because when we come in the truth, we all have bad characters. We all have bad habits. So now we want to change. Instead of the works of the flesh, we want the fruits of the spirit. Now, the fruits of the Spirit don't mean you weak. It don't mean you a simp. Because some brothers read that, and that's how they translate that. That ain't what it's talking about. Christ had the fruits of the Spirit. Did he whip people in the temple? Yes, sir. That's, that's the Spirit of Christ. Sometimes you got to whoop a whoop uh, brother. Well, anyway, where are we going? <laughs> Give me... Family. We're going to talk about family. Genesis 18, 18. Because I did a class years and years ago called Three Trials of Faith. And the three trials of faith I discussed was yourself first. You got to work on that. Followed by your married life. Followed by your, how did it, I tell you, it's been so long. Congregation. Right, family and then congregational. Right. So. What we're going to talk about now is family, which goes into your married life. Genesis 18, 18. Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 18 and verse 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. So Abraham commanded his household. You married men must command your household. Like it says, in, give me that in 1 Timothy 3 and uh, 5, or is it 6? One of 5 or 6. Yes, sir. 
First Timothy chapter three and verse. For a man, if a man five. know not how to rule his house. Yes, sir. First Timothy chapter three verse five. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? You can't be a leader in a church if you can't rule your house. Some brothers are like that. You make excuses for your wife. In Greenleaf, I got the video. I hesitate to show it. But every time asked after the Sabbath, not every time, the sister, when she get in an argument with her husband, she would fall on the floor and flop around like a fish. And when I saw the video, because the brother sent the video, I said, she's faking. The sister is faking. It's not real. Only one believed it was Barnabas, Captain Barnabas. He believed it. Bishop, Bishop, he real, it real. So the brother took the sister to the doctor. The doctor says, because I told him in, take her to the hospital. Doctor said, there's nothing wrong with her. He took her the next day to the psychiatrist. The psychiatrist sat down with her for an hour and a half and said, there's nothing wrong with her. Hmm. So when you get in an argument with your wife, she conveniently, and she got to have on purple IUIC garment, get on the floor and flop around. These are backdoor marriages. Hmm? Where Captain Shemaya go, hmm? Huh? Backdoor marriages. And the sister was, I heard the sister was a decent sister. Until them two got together, now she got demons, allegedly. And he don't know what to do. Hmm. Give me second Ezra 14, 13. I'm going to leave that one there. And I do got the video. Second edges. <laughs> Chapter 14, verse 13. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. You men see that? Set your house in order. Setting your house in order don't mean make excuses for your wife. Hey, bro, why your wife went over there and cursed everybody out? Well, let me explain. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Bring her up here. Let her explain for herself. That's how when you read the scriptures, the women had to speak for themselves, not the husband playing interference. Read it again. Yes, sir. Second Edges 14, 13. Now, therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. See that? Comfort. I'm oh, sorry. Set thy house in order and reprove thy people. Go ahead. Comfort such of them as be in trouble mm -hmm. and now renounce corruption. Exactly. Give me uh, Ezekiel 14, 20. Greenleaf. Go ahead. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 20. Though Noah, Daniel, and Joe were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Brother, you can't deliver nobody but yourself. You cannot deliver your wife. It's your job to instruct and guide your wife. Not, you can't, when the Lord comes, you cannot play interference for her. You're going to be ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Well, Lord, let me say this on her behalf. <laughs> now it's just bones there. Give me Revelation. I don't know why I got Revelation 11 and 8. Let me hear it. I don't know why I put that down there. Yes, sir. Revelation. No, I don't want that one because I, yes, I don't know why I wrote that. You know when you write something down, you can't remember why you wrote it down? Anyway. The next topic I'm going to talk about after family is congregation. But one thing troubled me about family and congregation. Sometimes you bring family in, like we were talking about last night, the old school. How they took one brother, well, one brother took Shabal's wife and gave her to another brother, which was adultery. Simp. Simp. This was the old school. This was back in the 90s. And you would think things like that. We make sure that don't happen, but there's always that one case. Officer Alicia, Officer Alicia, 
Can you put the next one up on the screen for me? You can't make this stuff up. See, we rejoice when we read about 5,000 repented in one day, 3,000 repented in another day. You know what comes with 5,000 people repenting? 5,000 problems. Officer Alicia, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's read this one. Shalom. Most high Christ bless. Is Bishop at the school today? Over the past several months, Soldier Blank and Sister Blank have been having an affair behind my back. So evidently, this is what happened. This is in Houston, Texas. Yeah, that's right. I called you out. I, I Man, wait, 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 wait. I'm gotta get my thought together. I gotta make sure I say the right thing and don't throw nobody under the bus. The reason I'm not showing the photos, because there's photos. The reason I'm not showing no photos is because allegedly, I'm saying allegedly for a reason. What is it called when you swap? It's called swapping, right? Swingers, swingers, swingers. swingers. Brother and sister coming to the school because the sister works, a sister works with this brother's wife. They work together. She takes a liking to the sister. Comes to the school with her husband. They both take a liking to the sister and they decide they want to swing. You know, swing is ball. Y'all know, some of y'all young ones might not know what I'm talking about. And don't Google it. Just listen to what I'm saying. Oh, San Antonio. Okay, thank you. It's not used in the San Antonio. So they swap spouses. That's the alleged, that's the first story. But now the brother, they all, the, the three of them left. The one brother comes back and says he was not involved in it. So okay, but that's not the original story that they said. So that's why I'm not showing no photos, because people do lie. Alicia, put it back on the screen. All right. It says, I have lost faith because I have been in the truth with them since 2015. If blank comes to the school for class today, allow Bishop to blast their asses all over Israel. I have repeatedly told them. Next, Alicia. Alicia, what'd you do? Can you zoom in? Blow it up big. Zoom in big. She has him on our Amazon account together, and I've seen transactions for videos charged to the account. So his wife got this other dude on their Amazon account, charging videos, buying videos for him. Go ahead. I have told her to discontinue her affair with the man. Stop! Brothers, what is this? Do you see the problem? This is why some of y'all are simps. Read that again. I have told her. I have told her to discontinue her affair with the man, but she has refused. Stop. Can you get me the scripture in Deuteronomy? Is it 24? You can't make this stuff up, bro. Yes, sir. Is that what I want? The one about yeah, divorce. About, about the bill of divorcement. Yes, sir. Yeah, that one. Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 3. Well, verse 1. When a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he have found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of, her house, out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. You can't take her back. Once she's defiled, you can't take her back. That's what God, that's what God says. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes 7.26. You want to finish that, Bishop, that verse? What After verse? that, she is defiled, what you just mentioned. Oh, I didn't finish it? No, sir. Yeah. Her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. After that, she is defiled. But that is an abomination before the Lord. That's an abomination. Once another man lay down with your wife, she's defiled. You can't, we got some of you brothers in here. You know you a simp. You just sitting here. You know this is you. You know your wife be giving her happy nappy dugout to other dudes. Oh, she belonged to the street. Thank you. Come on, get, Captain, get alive. Yes, sir. Ecclesiastes, Bishop. 
Yeah, 7 to 26. Yes, sir. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 26. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and, ban snares and nets and her hands as bands. Meaning she's wicked as hell. This woman's the devil. Go ahead. Who so pleaseth God. Now, he's going to describe two types of men. Now, when we read these two types of men, you got to self-examine. Which one am I? Read that part. Who, who so pleaseth God. If you want to please God. Shall escape from her. Leave her the hell alone. Read. But. But. The sinner shall be taken by her. The sinner shall be taken by her. Meaning you take her back. That means you wicked as hell. There's two types of men. Now, go back, Elisha. Read that again. I have told her to discontinue her affair with the man, but she has refused. I left IUIC. She, this, she, this new dude was daddy long stroke. She said, oh, hell no. Go ahead. I left IUIC thinking I could try to fix things and not bring shame to my name. Wait, 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 wait. I left IUIC thinking I could try to fix things and not bring shame to my name. No, bro. No. You got it all backwards. See, this is, brothers, some of you in here who don't study. The word of God is not taking root in you. The moment she's defiled, she's, you kick her to the curb. Kick the hole to the curb. Don't try to fix things and work things out. I believe I, you, I see and fix. No, you've already brought shame to your name. Go ahead. I left IUIC thinking I could try to fix things and not bring shame to my name. But at this point, I don't care about it. Leviticus 5 and 1. Mm -hmm. I tried to counsel with Soldier Blank, but about the late night conversations. Wait, I tried to counsel with Soldier Blank about the, the late night conversations in a hypothetical way. But he took side to brush it off like it was nothing. Let me tell you, brother, something. Don't. Call officers or captains with hypotheticals. Because we, if it's a high, I'm not going to really take it serious. Hypothetical. Let's say um, that your wife or a brother you know, his wife likes another brother and his wife. No, come straight. What are you talking about? Read that again. Yes, sir. I tried to counsel with Soldier Blank about the late night conversations in a hypothetical way, but he took Blank's side to brush it off like it was nothing. You got to come straight. Some t I could me, I could generally we read between the lines. Some brothers can't. Read. I'm at my wit's end. They won't stop talking to each other, even after I destroy the new phone and forbid. So he broke her new phone and Alicia. Was it up? What, raise it up, Alicia, I think. Oh, the next one? Okay. Go ahead. I'm at my wit's end. They won't stop talking to each other, even after I destroy the new phone and forbid communication. You simp. Go ahead. The last communication was on her work phone, where, where put in a secret name as Dwayne on her phone at 8 a.m. this morning. Blank texts her that he would reach out to her after he wakes up. See that crap right there? Put a secret name. They I remember uh, at, at work, my partner, oh, he, had a, he was married and he had a girlfriend. So his girlfriend's name was The Job. So when the girlfriend would call him and the wife was there, she say she would look and say, oh, your job is calling, babe. You go, thanks, hon. Slick as hell. Wicked as we are wise to do evil. Come on back. They have been buying each other's gifts. She got him headphones and a Judah shirt that I don't wear. She, le she left our home to sleep at his house, allegedly with Sister Blank. I found an Amazon gift of sexy night clothes that was shipped to your... Oh. Oops. Damn. Oh, well, sorry. Well, Go that, ahead. Was, that was shipped to Yoel House during the time me and Blank have been arguing. Next. 
Listen, listen, listen. It is what it is. Whatever. It, it is, is what it is. Listen. How we how are we gonna be ashamed of the truth? That's what's happening. You know, this is his this is his narrative. What strikes me this whole thing is that hell you need counsel for. Exactly. I'm talking just on a basic instinct of being a man. Somebody else is tearing through your wife's tripe and you acting like I need to get counsel, I'm gonna have subliminals, and I'm running out of my wits and I'm it says, yo, many have fallen to women. And then you, you're, you're, the way to fix it is I'm going to leave the body and I'm going to have a real heart-to-heart -heart with her. Listen, you ain't built for this, buddy. Go to Christian church. Right. White man Jesus in your life. Yeah. How many you men go? How many, listen, uh, and I'm assuming nobody's going to raise their hand, but if you in here and that's your mentality, man, God bless you. You a dummy. You are a dummy. Bishop, they think, they think this is made up. This is real life stuff. Mm -hmm. And with that, Bishop, with all this going on, Bishop, Greenleaf, we see the, the cases in headquarters. We see the cases now. Texas is off the chain. I respectfully request, Bishop, Oklahoma be removed from the all-time freak nasty camps. No, Bishop. you're the freak nasty camps. You, you hold that. You hold that. You got to hold that. You got to hold hands. that thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on, Alicia. No. Oh. Come on. Bishop. When I... Come on, Bishop. When this I, is what was sent. <laughs> when Say I, it ain't so. I'm serious. This is what was sent. Go ahead. When I went into her phone, she was looking into polygamous, polygamous marriage and sex toys. We don't use sex toys in our house. See that? So this dude turned her out. Her, him and his wife. Go ahead. Next one, Alicia. They had all kind of sizes in there. Come on, Alicia, what's going on? Set of, <laughs> set of three butt plug training toys. His, at, hers, and hers. And Bam. Annalise, Annalise plugs for women couple something Malipa. Three. So this is what his wife was buying with this other couple. Okay, you can take that off the screen. I ain't making this. People be writing, Bishop always lying, be making something. I'm not making nothing up. I'm telling you the truth. Now I had to give receipts. I, said, I got receipts. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Because you are that simple. Now, where we going now? We're going to go to the congregation. So I'll put that between family and the congregation. Because sometimes you bring your family and there's that wicked brother or wicked sister who has not repented yet, and you just happen to run into them. Give me Luke 9, 49 about the congregation. Everybody in the congregation ain't right. Those are new souls, new spirits, trying to repent, trying to change, just like you and me. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 49. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. And we forbade him, because he followeth not with us. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto him, forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. So Christ said to leave, if they're not with us, leave the con that congregation alone. Leave that group of brothers alone. Let them do what they're going to do. Now, mm, there's a lot to say. Now, give me Matthew seven twenty one. Did we read that already? No, sir. Okay. The book of Matthew Chapter 7 and verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So I, I wanted to follow up the Luke one with this one. Because you have some people, they'll see Christ and the apostles and say, well, I don't want to join them. I'm going to do my own thing. You may fall into this right here. Read it again. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Go ahead. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, 
Ye that work iniquity. Ye that work iniquity is the part we want to focus on. That's why we must self-examine ourselves. Examine ourselves. Am I in a bowl of iniquity? Iniquity is another word for sin. Just like carnal, just like natural. Works of the flesh. Okay, from there. Give me Philippians 1.15. Still dealing with the congregation. The book of Philippians chapter 1 and verse 15. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife. Some of y'all in here, you only teach out of envy and strife. Some camps teach Christ out of envy and strife. Go ahead. And some also of goodwill. And some brothers teach of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Supposing to add affliction to my bonds. What was Paul was locked up. They said Paul was locked up because he was wicked as hell. But that's not why he was locked up. But that's what the contentious and the strifeful brothers were saying. Look, God is punishing Paul because he's wicked. He's the devil. That's why he's going through that. Read it again. Yes, sir. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Go ahead. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. That's why Christ said, leave them alone. Let them do what they do. Leave them alone. Go ahead. And I therefore do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Mm -hmm. For I know. That was a give me Hebrews 10, 25. Yes. Now, people online may say, see, because you got people that say, that's why I don't like joining congregations. Because you got these sick people. Listen, everybody's sick. The real reason some people don't join congregations is because you don't want nobody to say, hey, uh, you can't dress like that. It'll be a brother dressed like a girl or a sister dressed like a boy. They don't want to hear nothing. Read that. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. See that? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. As the manner of some is. You online, some of you are that group right there. Now, if you are sick, elderly, handicapped, that's totally understandable. You can't get to the school. We, I get letters like that. Shout out Tuesday all the time. The Lord knows you all. We understand that. But you have some that live right around the corner. Say, nope, I'm not coming there. Nope. You're forsake. Read it again. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. As the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. As you see the day of the Lord approaching, we got to exhort one another. That comes through being around brothers and sisters, okay? From there, give me Zephaniah 2 1. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. We are the nation not desired. The Bible says gather yourselves together. So you read that and go, no, I'm not obeying that. Okay, that's on you, ye workers of iniquity. Read on. Verse 2, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff. But Matt, that's talking about the destruction. Before the destruction, the Lord says gather yourselves together. Go ahead. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Now, what we want to talk about now before we get into prophecies is counsel. So we discuss self-examination. We discuss bad characters and habits. We discuss family. We discuss congregation. Now I want to talk about counsel. Give me uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 25, verse 4 and 5. Yes, sir. Ecclesiasticus chapter 25 and verse 4. Oh, how comely a thing is judgment for gray hairs and for ancient men to know counsel. Now, I was in Greenleaf last week. And there was a young girl. who had an Instagram with 10,000 followers. So I believe it was either Captain Arie or Captain Amaziah said, hey, open this 
Instagram because she had it set on private. And he, one of them asked her, the young girl, you got 10,000 followers, but your page is set on private. She said, oh, I had this account from when I was in junior high school, middle school. He said, okay, open the page. Let me look at it. She opens it. No, first she could not remember the password. She hummed and hawed. She was confused. So then she opened it. Not only was she smoking a hookah, she had a shirt with her breast showing, and the only thing covered was her areolas. So the captain said, why do you think you have 10,000 followers? Her little simple behind goes, well, because like I said, it was from middle school. The, pit, the, the date on the picture with the titties showing was February of this year. But she insisted. And I'm just sitting there. I'm, I'm furious. I'm fed up. I'm listening to this stupidity. You got some stupid girls in IUIC. And they're going to be gone. That's, they're going to hook up. And not, she ain't busted either. Raise your hand, single brothers again. Raise your hand, single brothers. Now there's less single brothers. So one of the captains said, what's in your DM? In her DM, all these men is trying to get with her. So she says, oh, I don't get with any of them. I just let them think I'm trying to get with them. Now, she ain't 16. She's about, she about 20. How old she is? 24 or 25. Some of y'all might get hooked with this. And she ain't right. I'm telling you now. She's not marriage material. She belonged to the streets. Kick her to the curb. But you'll get caught. She ain't ugly. Pretty sister. She got her pretty. I said, yeah, she's going to find a simp out there. She's just waiting for the right brother with money. Read it again. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 25, verse 4. Oh, how calmly a thing is judgment for gray hairs and for ancient men to know counsel. So as we're counseling her, she begins to say, her mama was there, her mama was there, and her brother. She begins to say, all that y'all saying, I hear and understand, but you're all wrong. So I look at the captains, I'm like, hmm, how long are we going to talk to her? When is somebody going to pull the trigger? Shoot her. When I said shoot, I didn't mean literally with a gun. I mean pull the trigger, make a decision. Now, I could have made a decision, but I need to know what the captains are working with. How are they built up? Many times I'll sit in council and I'll just listen. I might add two cents in, but I won't pull the trigger. I won't shoot the person. Because I want the men around me to pull the trigger. Read on. Verse 5. Oh, how calmly is the wisdom of, an old, men, of old men and understanding and counsel to men of honor. Mm -hmm. Much experience is the crown of an old man. And the fear of God is their glory. So now you got a young girl telling me I'm almost 60. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, Bon, was, was you there? You okay, you are okay, you safe. Oh, you was there? Oh, you wasn't there. Okay, he wasn't there. Greenleaf! Give me um <laughs> Ecclesiastes 39 and 7. Yes, sir. Ecclesiasticus chapter 39 and verse 7. And the brother, I forgot this part. The brother said, My mother always laughs when you tell these stories. Except when the story hit that household. Now the laughter was over. It ain't funny. How, how he know? How he know about my daughter? How he know? I know your daughter. I've seen her type before. This ain't my first rodeo. And I said to the daughter, I said, so you're just a tease. I said, so you tease men to entice them. She goes, yes. And we looking at Ma. Ma Dukes, you don't hear your daughter? I don't know what to do. The hole got to go. You get mad if you want. Now let me say this to you, brothers. 
and sisters, listen good. We talk about sins, works of the flesh. Give me a, I'm going to show y'all something. Give me Mark 4 about the lust of other things. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell y'all something. Listen good. Some of y'all online might be mad. It's okay, though. I'm going to help you. Help me help you. You know what I want, Cap? Yes, sir. The book, of, the book of Mark, chapter 4 and verse 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. Such as hear the word. And the cares of this world. And the cares of the world. And the deceitfulness of riches. And the deceitfulness of riches. Watch this. And the lust of other things entering in. And the lust of other things creeping in. Choke the word. And it becometh unfruitful. So now I want to pause there about the lust of other things. We always talk about adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, evil thoughts, hatred, right? But what we rarely talk about, I'm going to show you the lust of other things. Give me Matthew 10. I want where Christ said, if you love mother and father. Yes, sir. The book of Matthew chapter 10. And verse, Here's an example of the lust of other things. Where are we going? Verse 37. Uh-huh. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter. Ah, son or daughter. Go ahead. More than me uh -huh. is not worthy of me. Some of you, mothers, fathers, some of y'all in here, you love your son or daughter more than Christ. Christ said you're not worthy of him. Some of you love your mama and your daddies more than Christ. He said, you too, you're not worthy. You're not worthy. You're not worthy. So you're just, you're just here abiding time. That's an example of the lust. Go back to Mark 4. Yes, sir. That's why you've got to examine yourself. Because brothers will say, I don't commit adultery. I don't look at porn. I don't do drugs. I don't. Commit lasciviousness or concupiscence. I don't have them problems. I'm good with Jesus. Or your Howard Shy, whatever you call them. But the problem you do have is you're partial to your son and your daughter. That wicked child can do no wrong in your eyes. Everybody else see that wicked child? That child just took a dump in the middle of the floor. And you go, oh, ain't she cute? No, that ain't cute. That's disgusting. Beat that child. No, 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 no. That child can do no wrong. So that's your problem. That's your hang up. You're not worthy. Your, your child just cursed everybody out. Now you're giving them gifts. Here comes uh, Hanukkah. You got gifts for that child. That child gets nothing from me. That's why I was, uh, uh-uh, it can't be me. Can't be me. Mm-mm, mm-mm, that child got to go. Read that again. Mark chapter 4, verse 19. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So when you have a love or lust of other things, which could be family members, it will begin to choke the word. Why? Because you will never apply the word to that child, to your mother or father. No, the word of God, don't, it's not supposed to be applied to them. So you, brother, are here temporarily. I don't care how good you teach in the street. I don't care how good your classes are. And everybody know who I'm talking about. Or you know who I'm talking about. If this is you, if the shoe fit, wear it. You're here temporarily. You're abiding time. From there. What was the last one you read? Give me Ecclesiasticus 40, uh, 44, 3 and 4. Yes, sir. You asked for 39 and 7. We okay, never read give me that one. Yes, 39 sir. and 7. Sirach chapter 39, verse 7. He shall direct his counsel and knowledge, and in his secrets shall he meditate. See that? He shall direct his counsel and knowledge. Start at verse 6. Read that for me. Yes, sir. Sirach 39 and 6. When the great Lord will, he shall be filled with the spirit of understanding. Now, we all say we got the spirit of understanding, right? He shall pour out wise sentences. We pour out wise. I see some of you brothers on the street pouring out wise sentences, right? 
and give thanks unto the Lord in his prayer. Uh -huh. He shall direct his counsel and knowledge. You direct your knowledge and counsel. Mm -hmm. And in his secret shall he meditate. And you meditate in his secrets. That's the parables, the deep, dark sayings, which we all want to get the understanding to. But before we get there, we got to self-examine. We got to deal with a wife. We got to deal with, if you got a family, deal with your family. If you're part of the congregation, you got to deal with that. Now, once you get through all of that, now the Lord fills you with that spirit and you start to deal with his secrets. Okay, all right. Give me chapter 44, verse 3 and 4. Yes, sir. Sirach, chapter 44 and verse 3. Such as did bear rule in their kingdoms, men, re men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies, leaders of the people by their counsels, and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people. Wise and eloquent in their instructions. So all you captains, deacons, bishops, camp leaders, heads of schools, point men. We read this about our forefathers. Read it again from verse uh, 3 and 4. Yes, sir. Sirach 43 and 3. 44 and 3. Start at 1. Sirach 44 verse 1. Let us now praise famous men. And our fathers that begat us. We want to be like our fathers that begat us. We all want to be like them. Go ahead. Not like Mike, but like our forefathers of old. Come on. The Lord have wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning, such as did bear rule in their kingdoms. Men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecy. So we want to be like them. We want to be men of renown like them. We want to be able to give counsel by our understanding and declaring prophecies. Go ahead. Leaders of the people. We by, want to be leaders of the people by their counsels. Go ahead. And by their knowledge of learning, meet for the people. The word meet means good for the people. Wise and eloquent in their, un, in their instructions. But in order to get to that point, brothers, we got to self-examine. If you're married, you got to be able to deal with your wife and not make excuses for her. If you got a family, you got to be like Abraham and be able to guide them. If you're part of the congregation, you got to be able to give counsel and weed the wicked out. There's levels and steps to getting there. Okay, give me uh, chapter 37 of the same book, verse 16. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 37 and verse 16. Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. It means exactly what it says. We got to understand counsel. Don't, a lot of you brothers and sisters, your backdoor marriages are not based on counsel. The leaders over the school or the captains the deacons, the bishops may know things about that sister or that brother that you don't know. And when we try to counsel you, you don't listen. And you end up in a horrible marriage. Horrible. You go for a job. And you don't listen. We may say, hey, that's not going to make enough to sustain a family. You, 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 you come in the truth, you are, what is it called when you pack bags? Is that a, what, a backpacker? A backpacker. We say, bro, that's not the type of a job to sustain a family. But I want a wife! Bro, build yourself up. First, build your character and lower your voice. Brother came to New York. He was talking to, to Laba and Malachi. He said, I want a wife, yelling like, I want a wife. I got a good job. I'm sick of jerking off. Number one, lower your voice. Number two, your character's whack. That character you got, you have bad habits. You're not ready. You're violent. You going to say something? The brother you just mentioned, you know, he left, he left the truth. He dealing with, um, he in love with a stripper now, you know. He what? He left with a stripper. He left with a stripper. Yeah, he, you know, wow. and 
and he threatened us. He said, anytime we mention him, he's going to sue us. Okay. He threatened us. Wow. <laughs> we don't negotiate with terrorists. He Let said, if you mention me in class, I'm going to sue you all. So don't dare mention me. Go ahead. Sue, sue, sue. Everybody, the pastors want to sue too. Everybody want to sue. Now, give me the video, Alicia, about the NWO. Oh, and and this is why some people, when you constantly counsel them, I think you mentioned it in class about sister counsel, people that you counsel, and it's the same thing over and over and over. Leave those spirits alone. Before you get to the second counselor, ask him, did you apply, ask her or her, him or her, did you apply what was told to you in the first counsel? No. Goodbye. Don't counsel with them no more until they start to apply. And if, the, if, a, if it's a husband and wife, have both parties at the table. If the both of them ain't there, don't counsel them. Because it's going to be lie after lie. People lie, in case y'all don't know. Everybody lies. All right, Alicia, you got that for me? I think it's Bush, not Bush, uh, Biden, Biden. Started 1420. Occur, occurs every three or four generations. I can't hear nothing he's saying. As one of, as the, uh, one of the top military people said to me in a secure meeting. Turn it up. Day, 60, 60 million people died between 1900 and 1946. And uh, since then, we established a liberal world order, and that hadn't happened in a long while. A lot of people died, but nowhere near the chaos. And now is a time when things are shifting. Nobody can hear it, Alicia. World order out there. And we Nobody know. I know he mumbles. That's all we hear is mumbling. Just turn up the volume. Occurs every three or four generations. As one of as the uh, one of the top military people said to me in a secure meeting the other day, 60, 60 million people died between 1900 and 1946, and uh, since then we established a liberal world order, and that hadn't happened in a long while. A lot of people died, but nowhere near the chaos. And now is the time when things are shifting. We're gonna there's gonna be a new world order out there, and we've got to lead it. We've so he said there's going to be a new world order out there, and we, meaning America, have to lead it. That's what he said. Give me um, Ezekiel 14, 21. I just want to briefly touch about the tribulation. Briefly. Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 21. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sword judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. So the four sword judgment, that's what this whole chapter is going about, talking about God's four judgments that he uses to plague the earth. Read it again. Verse 21, for thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sword judgments. So let's see what the four sword judgments are. Upon Jerusalem, the sword. The sword. And the famine. Famine. And the noisome beast. Noisome beast. And the pestilence. And the pestilence, disease. To, to, cut it off, to cut off from it man and beast. To cut off from it man and beast. Th those are the four things he not only sends on us, Jerusalem, because we are Jerusalem. But the earth as well. We're going to show you that. Give me 2nd Ezra 16, 19. Sir. Sir. 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and verse 19. Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. See that? Scourges for amendment. That was 19, right? Yes, sir. Jump down to verse 22. Just getting there for time's sake. Verse 22. For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So the Lord is sending his four judgments throughout the earth, and it's going to hit us. It is already hitting us. 
From there, give me Revelation 6 and 8. Yes, sir. The book of Revelation chapter 6 and verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. Now, these four horses that we read about, we've gone over this before, is referring to the so-called white man as he rises in the earth and conquers and, sends, and brings forth plagues and destruction. Read it again. Yes, sir. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. How do we know it's death? Uh, this is the white man. Give me that in Isaiah 28. Yes, sir. We have made a covenant with death and hell. The leaders of our people. You know what I'm talking about, yes, right? Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death. And with hell are we at agreement. The leaders of our people made an agreement with the so-called white man. It said we made, an, we made a covenant with death. And with hell are we at agreement. Go ahead. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through. When judgment comes. It shall not come unto us. The leaders of our people said it's not going to touch us. Why? For we have made lies our refuge. They trust in the Christian religion and political system. Was that it? No, sir. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. They've hid themselves under the false, falsehood of the white man's lies. Back to Revelation 6, 8. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. That's to, the Americas. To kill with the sword. To kill with the so with sword. And with hunger. And with hunger. That's famine. And with death. And with death. And with the beasts of the earth. And with the beasts of the earth. This is the same thing we read in Ezekiel 14 about God's four sword judgments. Same thing we just read in 2nd Ezra 16. Ain't nothing changed from the Old Testament to the New. You might have thought it changed, but it didn't change. Okay, from there. Give me, uh, Elisha, give me Vatican News. Vatican News. Now, I tell you, one thing about so-called Pope. When they write, they write these long dissertations. And you know, you know the scripture says, in a multitude of words, lack of not sin. Yes, sir. That's how they write in the uh, Catholic church, the Christian church. Just like uh, when these uh, politicians, they write some kind of legislation. It's always like 200 pages or 400 pages. And a point might be page 100. But they got all this riffraff all around. It's like, what the hell is all this? Ain't nobody got time for that. What are you going to say, Kana? Now, they do that a lot of times because they hide their agenda in it, and they're trying to get it signed off on, and then they reveal what it is. They bury it inside it. Even, even with contracts, when you get, like, insurance, there's a whole bunch of just gibberish, but there's only a few lines that are specific to knowing what, what it's about. All right, Alicia, you got that for me? Now, I couldn't read all this thing, but all right, there's your friend, the Pope. He's talking with Muslims and uh, Buddhists. All religions came. I showed y'all this on Shout Out Tuesday. Go ahead. Raise it up. Read that. <clears throat> yes, sir. Pope, sustainable development rooted in ethical values. Even, even that. I'm like, what the hell is this talking about? Sustainable development rooted in ethical values. Go ahead. Pope Francis on Friday meets with participants in an international conference entitled Religions and the Sustainable Development Goals. Okay, raise it up, please. In 2015, Pope Francis addressed the UN General Assembly in New York shortly before member states unanimously adopted Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals. So, this was back in 2015 when the Pope gave this uh what is it called? A sustainable development. Yes, sir. But there was a general assembly regarding a something that the uh, government calls Agenda 2030 and the sustainable development goals. Go ahead. Fast forward to 2019, and the Pope was in the Vatican on Friday where he greeted participants taking part in a two-day international conference entitled Religions and the Sustainable Development Goals listening to the cry of the earth and of the poor. Mm, raise it up. 
Let me see what I want. Um, read this. Yes, sir. Listening to all voices. Pope Francis got straight to the point by telling those gathered that when we speak of sustainability, we cannot overlook how important it is to include and to listen to all voices. When they say all voices, they're referring to, number one, white people. Mm -hmm. Number two, weak, effeminate nations. Go ahead. Especially those usually excluded from this type of discussion, such as the voices of the poor, migrants, indigenous people, and the young. Now, I watched one of the Vatican uh, assemblies where he met with several American Indian tribes, so-called Gadites. And they, they did a dance, they played drums, and the Pope is just sitting there falling asleep, and I'm like, what the hell is this? And he wanted the Pope to apologize for the Spanish destroying the tribes, you know, doing the conquistadors. And he looks up and he goes, okay, sorry. And that was it. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Ray, go back and raise it up. I'm getting annoyed just reading it again. Raise it up. Read that economic and political. Yes, sir. Economic and politi political objectives, Pope Francis stressed, must be sustained by ethical objectives which presuppose a change of attitude, what the Bible would call a change of heart. Already, St. John Paul II spoke about the need to encourage and support an ecological conversion, he said. Now, notice the Pope deals with religion, but for some reason he's dealing with economic and political objectives. All you, These three things go hand in hand. Religion, I'm going to show you that in the scriptures too. They all work together. We might think they don't, but they do. Some of, some of y'all thought Rome was out of the picture. Rome's still in the picture. He's just very quiet. And he does that soft-spoken voice. But why you ask yourself, why do every president have to go see the Pope? Because they all work together. What are you going to say, Bishop? Can I? I don't, I'm still lost with these words. Yeah. I, I'm trying to understand where is this going. And, and, the, and the verbiage, and I can read. I just don't know why. Why are they trying to sell? What is the BS being sold right here? Go back to exactly. it. Exactly. Alicia. Yes. The Pope underlined that what was needed was a commitment to promoting and implementing the development goals that are supported by our deepest religious and ethical values. He also expressed the hope that concrete solutions and responses would emerge from the conference. It's still goobly gop. Yeah. What he's talking about, because I showed you on, if you saw Shout Out Tuesday, not only do they want the one world religion, they want all religions to be together. They want a new economy. That's what they're talking about, changing the dollar over. And they want uh, all, they have 193 uh, governments that signed uh, the Agenda 2030 with uh, regarding um, famine, the production of food to help all nations. Um, and they got, they're implementing peace where they don't want, which goes with hate speech. That's what this whole garbage, this goobly gop is all about. Raise it up. Let's read this one about indigenous peoples. Indigenous people. During his address, the Pope made particular mention of indigenous peoples, saying that in a strongly secularized world, such peoples remind us all of the uh, sacredness of the, our earth. Their voice and their concerns, he added, should be at the, the center of the implementation of the 2030 agenda. And so again, he's mentioning implementing the 2030 agenda. Now that was what the G7 discussed. But the Pope is all for it. We're going to find out about this. Uh, Alicia, give me the next one because I'm getting bored listening to this. Give me the United Nations... And even then, when you read that one, it's like 500 pages. I'm like, what the hell? I ain't going sifting through all of this. The United Nations uh, transforming our world. Right. This is it, right? The United Nations. Go ahead. Yes, sir. United Nations transforming our world. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable <laughs> Development. Uh, read where it says... Mm, go ahead, just read that. All right. 
Preamble. This agenda is a plan of action for people, planet, and prosperity. So this is for and this is a global assessment. Go ahead. It also seeks to strengthen universal peace and larger freedom. Uh -huh. We recognize that uh, eradicating poverty in all its forms and dimensions, including extreme poverty, is the greatest global challenge and an indispensable requirement for sustainable development. So now remember this in uh, extreme poverty. Remember they said uh, Russia, when they put the sanctions on Russia, Ukraine is the one that deals with the wheat and all that, yep. and that's going to cause a food shortage in the world. And now they're saying, oh, we want to end extreme poverty. Mm-mm, mm-mm, no, no. It's all garbage. It's all lies. All these things sound good to the ear, but they have secret agendas behind their wording. Go ahead. No, all jump to the next one. I'm getting tired. Raise it up, Elisha. Right there, people, planet, prosperity. All right. People. We are determined to end poverty and hunger in all their forms and dimensions and to ensure that all human beings can fulfill their potential in dignity and equality and in a healthy environment. Planet, we are determined to protect the planet from degradation, including through sustainable consumption and production. Sustainability. So what they want to do, they want to get rid of automobiles that run on gas because you know how there's, the gas is going up. Right. They want to get rid of that and use electricity. That's one of the things that they want to do, guy. Right? Sustainably managing its natural resources and taking urgent action to climate change so that it can support that the needs of the present and future generations. But it ain't going to end their nuclear testings. Go ahead. Prosperity. We are determined to ensure that all human beings can enjoy prosperous and fulfilling lives and that economic... Economic, that deals with the money and finances. Go ahead. Social. Social. And technological progress occur, occurs in harmony with they nature. They want everything to harmonize with nature. It's all BS. What's the next one, Alicia? Read that peace one. Yes, sir. Uh, peace. We are determined to foster peaceful, just as just and inclusive societies which are free from fear and violence. Now, pause there. You may say, well, that's a good thing. Get rid of Boko Haram. Well, that's a part of it, but it's deeper than that. It goes in when you're teaching the Bible. They call it hate speech now. They're going from country to country saying there's certain things not to teach. Like if you're going against, uh, if you're against gender equality, if you're against transgender, that's why all this is cloaked with their words. Read that again. Yes, sir. Uh, we are determined to foster peaceful, just, and inclusive societies which are free from fear and violence. Hey, go up to the top. Is there a search bar in there? Alicia, go up to the top. Type in LGBT. Uh, uh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, let me see. Just LGBT, is it Q? Put a Q there. Uh... Let me see. Raise it up. I want to see what they got. Uh, sustainable. These are the LGBT? No, I don't see it. It's the second one, Bishop. The importance of LGBT. Yeah, I, you know I can't see. Go back to it. Go back to it, brother. It's the Take the cue off for a second. Right, the importance, importance. right That's there, right it. there. Yes, sir. That's it. Click that. All right. The importance of LGBTI data and the impl implant implement implementation of Agenda 2030, collecting data on health and well-being indicators of SDG. That's 3. why I say a lot of the things is hidden with words. They put these words and they want to include all of this crap in there. Okay. Hey, from there, because I got a headache now, give me a video, the next video on, bear with me, bear with me a second. Alicia, what's the next video I gave you? Uh, I want the one about the accident. There should be one about a car accident. No, give... Uh, okay, put that. I want that. Read that. 
Yes, sir. Questions remain after highway crash involving monkeys. And the 11 day, can you zoom in just a little bit? In the ele- Thank you. In the 11 days since a truck hauling 100 monkeys from, uh, what is that, Mar- Mauritius? Marit- yeah, that's Africa. Crashed in Pennsylvania. One woman who got close to the scattered crates of monkeys on the highway has been treated for possible symptoms of illness. And, and Kenya Airways, which is believed to have transported the monkeys to the United States, has decided not to renew its expiring contract to ship research primates here. So for some way, there was an accident. Monkeys got out, like four, I believe. The one woman touched it. She got infected. Uh, they don't know if anybody else got affected. Read. No other reports of possible illness related to the crash have emerged, according to state and federal health officials, who said it was not known whether the Pennsylvania Pennsylvanian woman's symptoms were related to the uh, Sinomag- Sinomagus uh, macacus, which were being quarantined and monitored for diseases. That- Experts said that direct exposure to monkey saliva or feces could be dangerous, but that the risk of a broader outbreak was low. Really? Okay. Hey, Alicia, give me the next one. It should be, is it a video? Or is it an article? I can't remember. Okay. Play that. So that was back in February. Cases of monkeypox, a relatively rare virus, have been confirmed in Europe, Australia, and North America. A man in Massachusetts who recently traveled to Canada has a confirmed case. We are in the process, um, as you can imagine, of working with public health authorities on contact tracing. Madrid, Spain's health minister, Enrique Ruiz Escudero, says there are seven confirmed monkeypox patients in the region, with 22 more suspected. Three people have been hospitalized with the disease in Italy. Some health officials say there is no reason to panic. This is not going to spread and get into the general population and cause an epidemic like coronavirus has. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says initial symptoms of monkeypox include fever, malaise, headache, weakness, swollen lymph nodes, and a distinctive rash. Because monkeypox virus is closely related to the virus that causes smallpox, the smallpox vaccine can protect people from getting monkeypox, according to the CDC. This is Inside Edition Digital. Well, all righty then. So... Like, they'll have a truck with monkeys. All, all of a sudden, there's a crash. It's convenient. It's like, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Hey, give me, um, Alicia, was there another video? Was it dealing with monkeypox? What is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me that one. Hey, hey, Bishop, when, yes, you, when you look at this, you remember that movie, The Outbreak? Where they were chasing the monkey, they bring out they bring stuff out in a movie before they implement it in real life, man. You know. Go ahead, Alicia. This Florida, pay attention, Florida. Anybody from Florida here? Yeah. Oh, Captain's a car. Go ahead. From the CDC tonight, following an outbreak of a rare see, but oh. potentially deadly disease in Florida. You turn it's it up. Not only those who live there, but also visitors. Tonight, who's considered high risk and what doctors are urging you to do now. It is an outbreak in Florida. Cases of meningococcal disease skyrocketing. The illness can cause meningitis, an infection of the brain and spinal cord, or even the bloodstream and it spread through direct contact, like kissing or sharing a drink. 10 to 15% of of patients that get infected will die from it. Florida reporting 21 cases. That's more than the state's five-year average for the disease. A large number in the central part of the state. Orlando Health seeing five cases this year. Dr. Jared Fox is chair of the hospital's infectious disease department. Typically, the, the symptoms will start Um, anywhere between three to six days after um, exposure. 
Though symptoms start out like the flu, fever, headache, and a stiff neck, other symptoms include nausea, vomiting, light sensitivity, and confusion. Getting treatment early with antibiotics is key, as a person infected can deteriorate rapidly. This is typically someone who may be complaining of a headache in the morning, and by evening time, afternoon, evening time, they're dead or, or comatose. The best way to protect yourself is to get the meningococcal vaccine. These high risk groups are now being urged to roll up their sleeves. College students, those with a weakened immune system, gay and bisexual men, including those living with HIV, and anyone who hasn't had a vaccine in the past five years. Well, alrighty then, you can't make this stuff up. Vaccine after vaccine, sickness after sickness. You can't make this stuff up at all. Give me that in, um, give me, mm, that's why we got a praying plan. Only thing with regarding, what well, the scriptures do talk about, Pastor, give me that Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Pestilences. Christ prophesied that thing that there would be pest We're in this time. We are in this time time give me uh genesis 129 i'm going back to covid just for a second just want to talk about covid for a second that's the big thing or was a big thing is is it back on the rise again they said covid is back on the rise again the lord gave us a plan give me that genesis 129 yes sir genesis chapter 1 verse 29 god said behold i have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. So the Lord gave us herbs to eat. Give me Psalms 104, 14. Now I know a lot, well, people in the island generally, they know about herbs, but I know Judah really don't know too much about herbs. The other tribes, mm, Judah was getting jacked up. Give me that. Psalms chapter 104, verse 14. He calls it the grass to grow for the cattle, an herb for the servants of man. An herb for the service of man. Hebrews 6 and 7, please. The book of Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 7. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh often upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. So the Lord sent forth herbs for us. That is one plan to help us during COVID and these uh, pestilent times. Okay, and ain't 100%, but that's why we got to pray and plan. Pray and plan. Give me Second Maccabees 5, 27. Second Maccabees chapter five and verse 27. But Judas Maccabeus with nine others or thereabout withdrew himself into the wilderness and lived in the mountains after the manner of beasts with his company who fed on herbs continually, lest they should be partakers of the pollution. So Judah Maccabees and those with him fed on herbs continually, lest they should be polluted with or lest they should be partakers of the pollution, the eating of the swine, and things of that nature. So, hey, put the book up about the Black Plague, the Diaspora. This was a book that I got. Read that. Yes, sir. Uh, Encyclopedia of the Jewish Diaspora. Now, we really wouldn't read books like this because you see two Edomites on it. Mm -hmm. However, in the book, there's th uh, three series and it tells you about the Jews, the original Jews, scattered from Africa to the Americas. It tells you that crystal clear in volume one. Now let's read this one, what it says. Yes, sir. Food was also quite similar 
to the consume to that consumed by Christians, with the exception of dietary regulations imposed by Jewish law. Essentially, this meant no pork. Jews in Spain also hunted wild game, just as did their Christian neighbors. The diet then, as now, was rich in vegetables and fruit largely unknown in Christian Europe. And of course, an uh, abundance of fresh fish. All of this was also important for health, and it is significant with with, with excuse me, it is significant that with the exception of some communities in Catalonia or large cities such as Toledo, few Jews were affected by the Black Plague. Few Jews were affected by the Black Plague, which was a pestilence that affected your lungs, like COVID. It's very similar to COVID. Go ahead. Or other plagues of the mid 14th century. Far fewer Christians also died in Spain than in the rest of Europe, than in the rest of Europe, and it has been suggested that this was due not only to better diet and health, but also to sanitation and such thing as bathing. Because the white man didn't like to take a bath. Damn. So, <laughs> a lot of us escaped being put to death during the Black Plague back then because we had a better diet. We ate fresh fish and herbs and vegetables. So I know, like in the southern states, I, I, like out here, I don't know how many of y'all, you know, you know how to eat out here. Fry this, fry that, greasy this, greasy that. Didn't want to know why. I, I, I'm trying to lose weight. I can't lose no weight. Come on. Stop fooling yourself and your kids and your husband-to-be. Your cake look like a three-tier wedding cake. Your food, your plate, your plate of food look like a three-tier wedding cake. What the hell is going on here? Ain't nobody got time for that. Give me Wisdom of Solomon 16, 12. Yes, sir. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16 and verse 12. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health, but, the, but thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. Now, that's what I wanted to get to. Read it again. Read it again. Yes, sir. For it was neither herb. Nor it wasn't so much the herb the Lord revealed. Go ahead. Nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. But the word of but, the, but thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. Is really the word of God. That's what the Lord revealed. He said, it's not so much the herbs that healed them, but it's my word that healed Israel. That's what we always got to meditate on and remember that. Okay. So from there, give me, uh, hey, Alicia, you got uh, the next video? I believe it's Biden. Biden's talking about, uh, I sent you two, I believe. Let me look. Let me look. You got it? Let me check. Huh? I can't hear you. One video for Biden? No, 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 no. Hey, can I talk? Somebody talk. Yeah, I'll be able to talk. Sort of. So on behalf of IUIC Oklahoma, we are now exonerated from freak nasty camp of the world. Texas, you got it. <laughs> hey. Real quick, while Bishop's getting that, I do want to say something. We don't normally do this, but I want to address all you chitter-chattering people in the YouTube uh, comment section. How do you have enough time to take notes and gain understanding if you've been typing and commenting since class started? I'm just going to start blocking y'all. Y'all, they just keep on talking. I'm just going to start blocking. You don't need to say nothing. Stay focused. Take notes. You won't grow if you do not study you have to go back to these classes go back to your notes and meditate on them you can't do that if you're just typing all throughout the class all right cool. captains what y'all got atlanta captains nothing boy i tell you where's whole shy at we in memphis whole shy ain't even up here huh all right, I sent it to you, Elisha. Now, I showed this on Shout Out Tuesday, but I just wanted to show it again.
This is your president. Listen good what he said. Turn it up so we can hear this guy, this old dude. With regard to food shortage, yes, we did re re so talk about food shortages. And, uh, and it's going to be real. The price of these sanctions is not just imposed upon Russia. It's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. And uh, because both uh, Russia and Ukraine have been the breadbasket of Europe in terms of wheat, for example, just give one example. But we had a long discussion uh, in the G7 with, uh, um, the, uh, with both uh, the United States, which has a, as a significant, the third largest producer of wheat in the world, as well as Canada, which is also a major, major producer. And we both talked about how wheat could increase and disseminate more rapidly food, food shortages. And in addition to that, we talked about uh, urging all the European countries and everyone else to end trade restrictions on on sending uh, lim limitations on sending food abroad. And so we are in the process of working out with our European friends what it would be, what it would take to help alleviate the concerns relative to uh, food shortages. So your president said there, he said food shortage is very real. Some of y'all don't believe until a white man says it. Okay, give me that in Acts 11. Yes, sir. The book of Acts, chapter 11 and verse 20 28. Eight. Mm -hmm. The book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 28. Are we going, so I want you to pay cl very close attention. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the Throughout all the world. The word dearth means famine. Go ahead. Which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Which that part right there, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Now remember, Christ allegedly died, I'm saying allegedly, around at the age of 33. So let's just say 33 AD, right? 33 AD. Claudius Caesar became Caesar around 41 AD. There's like eight years. How many of you know I'm bad at math? It's eight. It's eight. eight years. Eight years. So I'm saying that to say this. The prophecy that Agabus gave came to pass eight years later. Some of y'all, we tell you things and you go, well, if it don't happen in the next 15 minutes or 15 days, I don't believe it. Then some of you, like last week, said, what if it don't happen? Well, what's the worst thing that could happen, brother? You have extra food. Is that so bad you got extra? That's it. That's the worst thing. Are you that simple? Give me a uh, Genesis um, 41, 33 to 36. The book of Genesis chapter 41. And verse it's going to happen next week. Sis, sis, it's going to happen. Christ said famine is going to come. It's going to happen. It's, if it don't happen next week, I don't know what to do. Shut the hell up. Go ahead. Genesis 41, verse 33. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Because there was going to be a famine. Remember, in this history, there was a dream. Pharaoh had a dream about seven fat cows and seven skinny cows. And Joseph interpreted, interpreted the dream. He said them seven fat cows represent seven years of prosperity. Them seven skinny cows represent famine seven years of famine good yes sir verse 34 let pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of egypt in the seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come so what did joseph have a plan joseph had a plan he said during those seven years of plenty do what take what during those seven oh excuse me and let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land in the seven plenteous years. Take the fifth part. The fifth part of all that come in, put that to the side. Yes, Go ahead. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities and that food shall be uh, for store to the land against the seven years of famine. We tell brothers and sisters to prepare. Passover is about to come up, by the way. Sisters, by 
cookies, uh, pancake mix, things with leaven. Uh, well, I bought three months worth of cookies and pancakes. Am I supposed to throw the leaven out? The Bible said throw the leaven out. But that's a way, sister. The Bible says throw the leaven out. We told you non-perishables, such as beans, rice, things of that nature. But you don't listen. You're so much into pleasing your gut, your udders. You. <laughs> now you got all this excess that the Lord says throw out. The hell is this? Read that again. Yes, sir. Verse 35. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store in the land against the seven years of famine. We got every IUIC school preparing. Isn't that right? Yes. Is that right? Sir. Go ahead. And that food shall be for store in the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. Was that down to six? Uh, 36. 36. Yes, sir. Yes, sir 36, okay, give yes, me Luke twenty one eleven. The book of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 11. This is Christ speaking. Start at 10. Verse 10. Then said he unto them, nation shall rise against nation. We see that with Russia and Ukraine. Go ahead. And kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes. And we shall... see that with it. China and uh, is it Taiwan? Taiwan. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. We saw that in Spain and other places. Go ahead. And famine. And what? And famine. I don't believe that's going to happen. Shut the hell up. Go ahead. And pestilences. And what? And pestilences. We just saw that. And pestilences. Go ahead. And fearful sights and great signs shall be shall there be from heaven. You see things like the what they call that blood moon and all that brothers running not brothers with are you I see but other cams running. It's a blood moon running around like the Muppets. The hell is this? Christ told you these things would come to pass. Give me Joel two and nineteen. Hey Bishop. Yes, sir. And it says it says the famines. Meaning it's something that's going to keep reoccurring. Yes. You know, it's not just it's going to just happen one time. It's going to happen. They're going to try to fix it, put bandage on it, and then it's going to happen again. Okay? Right. Joel 2.19. Joel chapter 2 verse 19. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine. The Lord said, I will send you corn and wine. Blessings. Go ahead. And oil. And oil. And you shall be. Oh, you know what I forgot? We got to go back to Acts 11. We didn't finish that. Because brothers will read that and go, we don't got to prepare for nothing. The Lord's going to send us oil and wine, corn, oil, and wine. Okay. Watch this back in Acts 11 because we didn't finish that. Watch this. Read it, Acts. the whole thing again, 28, 29. Yes, sir. Acts chapter 11, verse 28. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the spirit that there should be great dirt throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Eight years later. Now watch this. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. What did they do? They had a plan. They had a plan. They had a plan. You sit there if you want talking about the Lord going to send corn from heaven. You stupid as hell. Joseph didn't do that. And our forefathers, the disciples didn't do that. They said, hey, we better plan. And without planning, the Lord will help us. Go back to Joel 2.19. Yes, sir. Joel chapter 2, verse 19. Yea, the Lord will answer. One sister said, I ain't preparing, but I know who got food. I'm telling you, you got sisters like that, she'll bring a, a gang of niggas to your house. They got food! They got food! I also got hot brass. Right. I'm telling you, y'all keep on playing... Everybody in Israel ain't Israel, I'm telling you. They niggas with fringes in the border blue. Waiting to see what you got. Where we going? Joel 2, 19, sir. Mm -hmm. Joel chapter 2, verse 19. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. Mm -hmm. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but yeah. I will remove far from I, far off. I don't off. want that one yet. Okay. Just remind me of that one. Yes, sir. That's Joel 2 and 20. Just remind me at the end of class. Yes, sir. 
Give me Isaiah 65, 13. Isaiah 60, you said 65, 13, right? Sir? Yes. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Why will his servants eat? Because we're going to plan. We're going to prepare. We counsel. That's what we do. Read it again. Yes, sir. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Mm, that's be the disobedient ones. Go ahead. Was that it? No, sir. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Mm -hmm. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. You shall be ashamed. That's the rebellious Israelites. From there, from there, some from there. Give me Psalm 65. I want to talk about insurrection, briefly insurrection. Because we talked about tribulation, and this is a part of it. We talked about the four-sword judgment. All that's a part of the tribulation. But this is the part we need to understand. Psalm 64 and 2. Yes, sir. Psalms chapter 64 and verse... Let me do it in this Bible. Pardon me. Psalm 64, verse 2. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. That's the white man. Go ahead. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Go ahead. Who wet their tongue like a sword. How does, what does it mean they wet their tongue like a sword? These guys are black extremists. They don't talk about the white extremists. They say, no, no. These guys that read the Bible are the most dangerous on the planet. We got to get them. This is why in Ghana, I'm telling you that's what's going on. This is why in Ghana, because when we went there years ago, everybody took flyers, everything. Everybody wanted to learn. Now you got the Catholic Church. We don't want to hear nothing. Get away from us. Christianity's rising up to fight against the truth of the Holy Bible. Right. Read that again. Yes, sir. Psalm 64, verse 2. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. They shall, they, excuse me, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Right. We're the perfect and it's shooting at us in secret. That means behind the doors, behind doors. They're having meetings, councils. Go ahead. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. And fear not. What verse was that? Verse four. Read verse five. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. These Christian groups, Catholic included, are evil. Go ahead. They, com they commune of laying snares privily. They talk about laying traps secretly. Go ahead. They say, who shall see them? Who they say, they say, meaning nobody's going to figure out us Christians set these traps up. Nobody's going to even believe that because we have the love of Jesus. That's what that's going into. From there, from there, from there, from there. Give me Acts 8 and 1. The book of Acts chapter 8 and verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church. Which there was, was a great persecution against the church. Go ahead. Which was at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. This is why we're trying to prepare you men for what is to come. Some of you think this walk is going to be a war. Oh, uh, tiptoeing through the tulips. Oh, no. Satan is going to rise up and persecute the Israelites. You're reading, that's why Paul's, get that, Romans 15, 4. Y'all keep sleeping. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Meaning in the past, that's what we're reading about, go ahead. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. See that? Hey, go back to Acts 8 and jump down. No, give me Acts 12, 1 through 4. The book of Acts, chapter 12. And verse 1, now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Because they saw that the Pharisees in them wasn't doing an adequate enough job. So the white man had to step in now. That's what's going to happen. When, these church, when they see this, these, church, these Christian black ministers are failing and many of them are going to join. Listen, a lot of these Christians are going to join this truth. Go ahead. 
Verse 2. And he killed James, the brother of John, with so the sword. So the white sword. man killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. They beheaded him. Go ahead. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. And because he saw it pleased the scribes and Pharisees. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Mm -hmm. Then were the days of unleavened bread. They took Peter to make, they didn't kill him on the spot. They wanted to make him a public example. Like in the movie Braveheart. What was his name? William Wallace. They could have killed him right then, but they said, no, 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 no. Let's make him a public spectacle and kill him in front of everybody. That's what they did during the time of slavery. Remember they were tar and feather, the biggest, blackest Negro in front of all the slaves. That's what they want to do to Peter. So to put fear in everybody. Okay, what was that? What verse was that? Verse four is where we're at now, sir. Go ahead. Verse four. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions, a quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. To bring him, see that? To bring him forth to the people. That was their plan. Give me Acts eighteen twelve, please. The book of Acts, chapter 18 and verse 12. Because a lot of you think these things could never happen again. So you think the Pope talking about unity of all religions, the politics talking about Agenda 23, or everybody coming together? Mm -mm. Hey, don't give me a, it just popped in my mind. In the Apocrypha, the book of Esther, about Haman. Mm -hmm, got it. It just, it's not, I don't even know where it is. You know where that yes, is, sir, thing is? Yes, sir, I know is? where it is. Yes, sir. Haman's talking to the king. Yes, sir. It's the book of Esther, chapter 13 and verse 4. So we're going to the Apocrypha. Go to the Apocrypha, go to the book of Esther. Yes, sir. And chapter, what chapter is it? Chapter 13, verse 4. Chapter 13, verse 4. Yes, sir. At, uh, excuse me, Esther, chapter 13, and you want to start at 3 to show who was speaking? Yes. Chapter 13, verse 3. Now, when I asked my counselors how this might be brought to pass, Haman, that excelled in wisdom amongst us and was approved for his constant goodwill and steadfast fidelity and had the honor of the second place in the kingdom. So, Haman is the white man. He's talking to the Persians. Watch what he says. And remember what Paul said, the things written aforetime is for our learning that we through patience and comforts of the scriptures might have hope. Watch this. Verse 4, declared unto us. This is what Haman declared. That in all nations throughout the world, there was scattered a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations. The 12 tribes of Israel he's talking about. And continually despised the commandments of kings. We're not going with the commandments of kings. We're going with what the Bible says. So Haman's bringing this out to the Persians. Go ahead. So as the uniting of our kingdoms honorably intended by us, cannot go forward. Pause right there. See that? So as the uniting of our kingdoms. The Greeks wanted to unite with Persia to get them from the inside. They eventually overthrew them later on, but that was their intention to unite. That's the same intention now with uh, what the Pope is doing, getting all religions to unite together. Agenda 23 with the G7, getting all nations to work together in harmony. It's the same agenda. Go ahead. Verse 5. Seeing then, we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men. See that? Mm -hmm. Dif differing in the strange manner of their laws. They said these guys got strange laws. Go ahead. And evil affected to our state. They're evil affected to our state. Go ahead. Working all the mischief they can uh -huh. that our kingdom may not be firmly established. So when you read this in its entirety, the king allowed Haman to make a decree to murder, to kill the Israelites, to put, to have insurrection against the Israelites. This is what we're reading about in Psalms. We're going to con continue reading about that too. Watch this. Give me 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 68. 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 68. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. And they shall take away certain of you. They and, shall take away certain of you, certain of you Israelites. And feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. Now, this was in Persia. Uh, Ezra is prophesying. That happened during the time of the Greeks. Hey, real quick. Find me that where it said, uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 1. It says certain Israelites consented to their religion. Yes, sir. 
First Maccabees chapter 1, verse uh, 43. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. Go ahead. And sacrificed unto idols. See that? Sacrifice unto idols. And profaned the Sabbath. And prof meaning what? They, they were at one time with the Israelites that was keeping the law. But they were so wicked, this group. And said, no, 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 no. We're going to give this up. We're going to follow what the heathen is doing. What the heathen is saying. It's going to happen again. That's why I showed you that thing and said, how'd it go? 5% of you love this revolution. 10% of you hate it. 85% of you don't give a damn. You're just here. Go back. Yes, sir. The book of 2nd Edwards, chapter 16. Uh, we'll go ahead in verse 69 now. 68 again. Yes, sir. 2nd Edwards, chapter 16 and verse 68. So when Ezra prophesied, not only did it happen during the time of the Greeks, it happened during the time of Rome, it happened in Spain, and guess what? It's going to happen again. A lot of you are, no, this is Babylon the Great, the greatest country on earth. It could never happen. It happened in the beginning. When this country was being established, it's going to happen at the end of this country too. Go ahead. Second Edges chapter 16, verse 68. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you. Wait, start at 67. Yes, sir. Second Edges 16, verse 67. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins. Leave off from your sins. And forget your iniquities. And forget your iniquities, your sins. To meddle no more with them forever. To meddle no more. You know how you meddle? This is for the porno brothers. You know how you meddle? Later, you, you and your wife get in an argument. You don't want nothing from her. She don't want to give you nothing. Yeah, okay. So you get on your phone, and you start looking at the porn. Hmm. Click, 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 click. And you're looking. You're meddling. Some of you single brothers with your Jergens lotion, you know what I'm talking about. Jergens, go ahead, read that again. Verse 67, behold. You know, now I use a poem, but it could be crack. It could be alcohol. If you are an alcoholic, monitor what you drink. We had many instances, we had several cases with alcoholics in IUIC. I think two that I could call off the top in Texas. Okay, read that. Yes, sir. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. And the only way God's going to lead us forth and deliver us from all trouble, meddle no more with your sins. Stop meddling. Once you meddle, you start playing with it. You eventually get caught. You get trapped. Then you're trying to figure a way out. Read verse 69. And excuse me, verse 68. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you. And now, this burning wrath of a great multitude, let's pause there. You want to know who that is? Well, who is that? Remember during the time of the Greeks, they would send officers to get you to sacrifice the swine and eat the swine. They didn't just send anybody. They sent certain officers from Greece to do it. Then they set up officers amongst the Israelites to work for them. During the time of Christ and the apostles, remember, the Pharisees and them that came with Judas Iscariot when they arrested Christ, remember, it said they had officers with them. These people worked with Rome. These were Israelites that worked under Roman dominion. Last week, a brother asked, he said, well, how do you know the difference? Because Christ said, sell your garment, give me that, and buy a sword. I want that. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 22 and verse 36. Luke chapter 22, verse 36. Then said he unto them, but now he that have a purse, let him take it. And likewise his script. And he that have no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. He was telling them to protect themselves. Protect themselves. From who? Vagabond Jews and all that. But now, so brother said, well, suppose some redneck uh, Edomite 
It got, they got me held down. They fighting me. My wife is about to get raped. What should I do? I said, bro, you better light. They behind up. I said that. I said, dealing with these, these nobody, uh, uh, give me a word. Extremists out there is not government officials. I said, that's different. I said, when the government officials came, Christ told Peter not to fight. He said, let this go through. Okay, he said, why? Because he had to fulfill the prophecy. So law enforcement or government officials, we're going to have to make an example. Why? Because we got to be taken. Give me that Matthew 24. I'm going to show you something. We got to be taken to their courts to give a testimony. Listen good to what I'm saying. You know what I want? It's around six through nine. Uh, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. I want the courts there. You shall be. I ain't looking oh, that's, at that's it. That's another chapter. I know, I know what you want, Bishop. Chapter 10 and verse 18. Matthew chapter 10, verse 18. And you shall, be, you shall be brought before governors and kings for my name's, I mean, for my sake. For a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Right. That's different than some snaggletooth extremists talking about, I'm going to rape your wife, then I'm going to rape you. No, you. Hot brass. Hot brass for everybody. The hell is this? But there's going to come a time when they will send their officials to come for us. And if they don't kill us on the spot, we will be taken to their... Read it again. Matthew chapter 10, verse 19. But when they deliver, excuse me, verse 18. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in the same hour what ye shall speak. Right. So it's going to be a testimony for us. We're going to go and we're going to, and then guess what they're going to do? Put us to death. Go back to second Ezra's, please. Yes, sir. Second Ezra 16 and 68. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. Right. So when they're making this one world religion, they might involve the Eucharist. It could be anything. They always change things week by week. But let's see what they do. Come on. Verse 69. And they that consent unto them Shall be, hit, shall be had in derision. Some of you are going to consent unto them. You're going to agree to join with them. You're going to be had in derision. Go ahead. And in reproach and trodden underfoot. Go ahead. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. You see that? So don't think you're going to learn this truth and you're just going to have a walk in the park. It says there's going to be a great insurrection. Against those that love the Lord. How are they going to know you love the Lord? Because they're going to see you keeping the commandments. Right. You ain't going to get involved in their daily activities or high ho or their holidays. He goes, and you ain't going to talk like they talk. This guy's different. You know, white people like Karen's come around. They always want to know your business. Don't tell them nothing about you. They're going to find out, though. They're going to find out. Where was we at? Verse 71 now, sir. That was 71? Uh, no, we, we haven't read it yet. No, sir. All right, go ahead. Uh, second of the 16, 71. They shall be like mad men, sparing none. See that? They shall be like mad men, sparing none. Go ahead. But still spoiling. Robbing. And destroying those that fear the Lord. Right. Verse, 40, verse 72. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Mm -hmm. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. That's when we're going to know who's God's chosen, those that endure to the end, meaning they give their life for this truth. Those of you that run or join in their reindeer games, I'll celebrate Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Massa. I'll celebrate Christmas. Okay, well, you're not chosen. Okay? You are a betrayer, a betrayer. Read that again. Yes, sir. Verse 73. No, 70 years. Yeah, that's no, 72 and 73. Yes, sir. Verse 72. 
For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Oh, hold that. Give me Hebrews 10, 34 to show you what happened during the time of Rome. Yes, sir. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 34. For ye have compassion on, of me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. They took joyfully the spoiling of their goods, good. Knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. So there were some disciples that was with Paul who lost everything for following Christ. Some of us going to be the same way, lose everything. We got to meditate, pray, and plan. If we can. Boss. <laughs> Boss. Re read that again. Second address again, sir. Yeah. Second address 16 and 72. But they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. Because right now, everybody say they, they called and chosen. Okay. When the insurrection comes, we going to know, and it's going to be that 5%. 10% of y'all going to be, I told you it was no damn good. 85% of you, but listen, I'll give this crap up. I'll join with you, Mr. White Man. You want me to celebrate Christmas? I'm celebrating Christmas, whatever. Eat the Eucharist, I'm going to eat the Eucharist. That's going to be 85% of y'all. But 5% of you is down for this truth. We're just trying to figure out, look through the spirit, who's who. Read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 73. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried. As gold, as the gold in the fire. As the gold in the fire. Give me uh, Joel 2.17. Yes, sir. To 20. Yes. Oh, there you go right there. Read that. A revolutionary understands that 5% of his people will love him. 10% will hate him. And 85% don't give a fuck. You see that? We know that's an IUI. People be like, oh, y'all got big numbers. No, our numbers really ain't big. Not really. Not to where we're going to get. But we understand 85% of you is just here. That's your backdoor marriages. These are the brothers that I heard your counsel, but I'm not listening to a damn thing you say. These are the sisters that suck and ride through the jeans. Remember that case? She, they don't give a damn. That was in Oklahoma. No, it wasn't. No, no. That wasn't. That was Florida. That was Florida. Uh... Where are we at? Joel 2.17. Yes, yes, read that. Yes, sir. Joel chapter 2, verse 17. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. You got to ask yourself, why is Joel prophesying about the priests weeping before what? Be between the porch and the altar. Between the porch and the altar. Go ahead. And let them say, spare thy people, O we Lord. We cry unto the Lord, spare thy people, O Lord. Why? Because of the great insurrection that shall come upon us. Go ahead. And give not thine heritage to reproach. Lord, please don't give us to reproach. Go ahead. That the heathen should rule over them. Uh-huh. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Right. Where is their God? Like it says in Wisdom of Solomon 2 and chapter 3. Go ahead. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. He's going to be jealous for his land and pity his people. Why is it saying like that? Because we're, in a land, we're not in the land. We're scattered worldwide. Go ahead. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. He said, I'm going to send y'all blessings. Go ahead. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. That's when the Lord going to intervene on our behalf. Go ahead. But I will remove. But, but before he does it. But. So wait, wait, wait. Before he intervenes. Some of us going to die. It's already written. Everybody ain't going to live through this. And when I say die, I'm talking about physical. I ain't talking about spiritually. Read. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. The northern army is the military and law enforcement. He said, I'm going to remove them far from off you. Mainly the military. Go ahead. And will drive him into a land barren and Yes, that's the military. He's going to move them to a land barren and desolate. With his face toward the East Sea. Uh-huh, Mediterranean or and Dead Sea. Dead Sea. And his hinder part toward the utmost sea. That's the Mediterranean right there. Was that it? And his stink shall come up. He said, and I'm going to destroy that military. Because those are the ones. Okay. From there, from there, from there. We're almost done. Want to finish that, Bishop? Yes, go ahead. Yes, sir. And his ill savor shall come up. 
because he have done great things. Exactly, exactly. Give me Revelation 16, 13. War. We're going to talk about war briefly. Revelation 16 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come I, out. Of hey, Alicia, put that on the screen for me. The unclean spirits, yep. You got, uh, go ahead, read that. And I, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. Mouth of the dragon, uh-huh. And, and out of the mouth of the beast. Uh-huh. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. The false prophet is their Christian religions, okay? That's your Caesar. I don't care how they try to change and unite all religions together. These un unclean spirits deal with politics, economics, and religion. Of course, the false prophets deal with their Christianity. The beast deals with the econom economics, and the dragon deals with their politics. Write that down. The dragon deals with their politics. That's their G7. You know, the, the scriptures talk about the seven heads and all that, and you got the G7, right? Everybody ever never noticed that? The beast deals with their economy, and a false prophet deals with their Christian religion. Okay? And guess what? Bunkers, bunkers won't save you in a time of war. You're still going to get it. You're going to get it. Give me that Isaiah 219. Did you finish that? Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. I did, verse 13, I did. Okay, Isaiah 219. The book of Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 19. Mm -hmm. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks. Hey, Alicia, come on. Put them bunkers up there. There's all kind of bunkers. Rich people got bunkers. A lot of people got bunkers. Come on, Alicia. That's a bunker. Come on, give me the next one. That's another bunker right there in the holes of the rocks. Come on. Look at that one in the mountain. Go ahead. There's another one in the mountains. There's another one. Go ahead. And this ain't for black folks. They already know who's going to be in them things. They are assigned already. Go ahead. There's another one. Go ahead. That one was the old one. They're going to try to restore that one. Go ahead. That's inside one. Go ahead. Inside another. Inside another. Super rich building, doomsday bunkers. That's a huge bunker right there for the super rich. Is there another one, Alicia? Look at that. See how many levels? They got two levels way underground. Way underground. You got to take the stairs and go all the way down. That's not for black folks and Latinos and Native American Indians. This is for your super rich. Okay, let's go back to Isaiah 2.19. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 19. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord. For th This is their bunkers. For fear of the Lord, go ahead. And for the glory of his majesty. Mm -hmm. When he arises to shake terribly the earth. When he arises to shake terribly the earth, go ahead. In that day, a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship to the moles and to the bats, mm -hmm. to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks. We just read about that, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks. Go ahead. For fear of the Lord. That's this World War Three. That's Armageddon. Go ahead. And for the glory of his majesty, when he arises to shake terribly the earth. He's going to shake terribly the earth. Give me Revelation 6.15. We're almost done. Revelation 6, 15. Revelation chapter 6, verse 15. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every freeman, hid, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks See of that? the mountains. Hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. The dens is those underground ones. The rocks of the mountains, the one we showed you in the side of the mountains. Go ahead. 
and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. Close the doors. Close the doors. Go ahead. And from the wrath of the lamb. And from the wrath of the lamb. Go ahead. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? And something like that you can't even plan for. We can't plan for this when the Lord makes his second coming. Watch this. Give me a uh, second Ezra 16, 28. Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse 28. For of a city there shall be ten left. And two of the field, which shall hide themselves in the thick groves and in the clefts of the rocks. That's them hiding themselves again. Watch this. As Here, in, oh, wait, that's all I want. Okay. Give me Jeremiah 16, 14. Y'all know this one. Because there's going to come a time when the Lord, when he gives us that power. Jeremiah 16, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord. That it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. We ain't going to talk about the deliverance under Moses no more. Go ahead. But the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. We're going to celebrate and talk about Christ delivering us from North America. Go ahead. And from all the lands where he have driven them. Uh -huh. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. So he's going to bring us into the land that he gave unto our fathers. Go ahead. Behold. I will send for many fishes, saith right, the Lord. Right now, we fishing. When we talking to the church members, we're fishing right now. Go ahead. Saith the Lord. And, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters. After, meaning after the second coming, I will send for hunters. Go ahead. And they shall hunt them uh -huh. from every mountain. We're going to hunt them from every mountain. And from every hill. And from every hill. And out of the holes of the rocks. And out of the holes of the rock. Get him, get him, get him. <laughs> Ain't nobody. Hey, y'all saw the X-Men with Magneto looking for the president? And he wait. I forgot the name of this one. First class, I think. Rogue was disguised as the... Nobody know what I'm talking about? They were hiding. And Magneto was waving his hand. And he said, where are you? Then he was like, oh, there you go. And he I went, come out. Wow. <laughs> And the whole thing ripped out of the mountain. That thing was beautiful. That thing gave me goosebumps. I was reading that scripture right there. I said, that's what's going to happen when we hunt it. Woo. There ain't nobody escaping. Woo. Get a Lord a hand for that. Nobody's escaping. Oh, now it's saying that um, Sons of Thunder got a, a bad song. It's called, it's called Hunters. Hunters. Get him. Runners. Yes, you yes. Know, that, that thing is bad. You know, that's talking about exactly what Bishop talking about here. Oh, after, after uh, they going to be hiding in the rocks, but we going to be hunting them. You know, oh, they going to all, you see all them fallout shelter they got, don't be hunting them from every last one of them. Every last one of them, they going to be hiding and we going to hunt them. Okay. <laughs> all praises, all praises. Where we at? Uh, We just finished Jeremiah 16 and 16. Okay. Give me 2 Ezra 6.26. We're almost done. Yes, sir. 2 Ezra chapter 6 and verse 26. And the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth. Mm. And the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. So there's a remnant of Israelites who will not taste death from their birth. Meaning you are born... Christ comes and delivers you. Hold that and give it a precept. Give me Ze uh, Zechariah 13, 8, 9. This is what it's going into. Yes, sir. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. So two parts of us is going to get put to death. Go ahead. But the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. That's literal. He's going to bring the third part through the fire. This is the men and women that never tasted death from their birth. Go ahead. And will refine them as gold. I mean, as silver is refined. Uh -huh. And will try them as gold is tried. And they shall call on my name. And I will hear them. 
I will say it is my people, and they shall say the Lord is my God. Now go back to 2nd Ezra 6 again. Yes, sir. 2nd Ezra 6 and 26. And the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth. And the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. That part right there, you know, give me the one in uh, 1 Corinthians 15. We shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. That one. Yes, sir. Second Ezra, I mean, excuse me, 1 Corinthians, excuse me. Chapter 15 and verse 51. No, yeah, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed. He moment. said, we shall not all die. That's what sleep means. But we shall all be changed. Go ahead. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Right, because we got to come through. You can't go through the fire with flesh and blood. You get burnt it up. Burnt it up. Yeah, yeah that's the word. Go ahead. <laughs> in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. That's why I said there's a remnant allotted to die, and there's a remnant allotted not to die. The Bible gives a number for the ones that's not allotted to die. He said one third. And that's how you know these schools we have, we're not at that number yet. Yeah. That's how we know these Christian churches, the reason they're upset, they know a lot of their members going to repent. Right. Don't be scared. They're going to repent. Where you at? Verse 52. Mm -hmm. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet, trumpet shall sound. Hey, but you know what? Remember what Christ said about the, the, the leaders of the churches? He said, the, the, I can't quote. He said, the publicans and whores, I don't know if he used them words, shall enter the kingdom before you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. He says uh, the, 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 um, the sinners, the, the, the publicans and the harlots, they're going to enter the kingdom before, right. before a lot of these people from the church. Reason why, Bishop? Because a lot of these people in the church, including the Christian church, they they get offended by everything. Mm -hmm. Deacons say ass. No, they're offended. They log off. You know I mean? They get offended by everything. That's why, you know, I, you know, they they offended by everything, man. You know? <laughs> Matthew 21, 32, I believe. Right. Is it 31? 31. Matthew 21, verse 31. Whether of them twain did the will of his father. No. I want Matthew the one about 20, the... 2131. Oh, that's it? Okay. I'm not looking at it. Go ahead. Okay, yes, sir. Verse 31 and 32. Whether of them twain did the will of his father, and they say unto him, the first, Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Because them leaders were wicked as hell. A lot of these Christian... I'm not saying all the Christian leaders, because we know even amongst the scribes and Pharisees, some of them believed, like Nicodemus. You read in Acts, and it says some of the priests believed. So I'm not making a blanket statement saying all the Christian leaders, there's a large portion of them wicked as hell. And the people on the street who never go to church and all that, the what did it say? What did it call them? The publicans and the harlots. The publicans and the harlots, the tax collectors, that's IRS, and the hoes out there, they're going to repent. He said they're going to get the kingdom before you guys. That's some cold stuff right there. Damn. Read verse 32. Verse 32. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. Right. You didn't believe John the Baptist. You said John the Baptist was wicked. You said he wasn't in the truth. You said he didn't have the truth. Uh -oh. Go ahead. <laughs> but the publicans and the harlots believed him. But the tax collectors and the harlots, they believed him. Go ahead. And, and ye, when ye had seen it, Repented not afterward. Repented that, not afterward. Go ahead. That ye might believe him. That you might believe him. From there, Psalms 91, we're almost done. And start at verse 1. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, chapter 91 and verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The secret place of the Most High is his word, his Bible, these scriptures. Brothers and sisters, that's why I said we always run to the parables. We want to know the mysteries. But the other parts about self-examination, we don't want that. 
a lot of us, we don't, uh-uh, I don't want to self-examine. I don't want to fix me. Well, you're the ones that's going to betray Christ. You're the Judas that will betray him for 30 pieces of silver. You're just here. I just want to know the mysteries. I don't want to know nothing, nothing else. Walking with the giants, yeah! Shout out to Deacon Ithon. Love you. Read that again. Yes, sir. Psalms 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Hey, give me that whole act. Give me, uh, give me that in Deuteronomy 29, 29. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29 and verse 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us. See that? So the secrets belong unto us. Amos 3 and 7, please. Sure. And that us is, of course, is Israel, but which Israelites? Was it Dathan, Korah, and on? No, them wicked dudes. No. It was the people that followed Moses at that time, and this time it was the ones that followed Christ. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. seven. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So as the Lord is revealing to us his secrets, then the angels are activated and carrying out God's orders, carrying out the mysteries that's being revealed. Back to Psalms 91, please. Yes, sir. Psalms 91 and verse 2. Start at 1 again. Verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We're under his protection. Go ahead. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. And when it says we shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, even in death, and when the death I'm talking about is physical, well, let, 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 let me show you that. Let me show you that. Hold that. Give me Matthew 10. The 34, 30, is 28. it 28? Yes, sir. Okay. Read Matthew verse chap- above it. Verse above it, I think. Well, uh, yes, sir. About the kill the body and the soul? No, I want the one that says what you hear on the rooftop. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 10, verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. Meaning, what I tell you in secret, speak it openly to everyone. That's the same thing we're reading about Psalms 91. Go ahead. And what ye hear in the ear. And that, what you hear in the ear, what you hear in secret. That preach ye upon the housetop. Preach it upon the housetop so everybody can hear it. Go ahead. And fear not them which kill the body. Wait a minute. Why say that next? Because the things we're preaching is going to piss the nations off. It's going to piss the leaders of congregations off. Read it again. Yes, sir. And verse verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body. Because what are they going to do? Kill our bodies. They're going to kill some of us. Go ahead. But are not able to kill the soul. Christ said, but they're not able to kill your soul, so don't worry. Go ahead. But rather fear him, which is able to do- destroy both soul and body Why in do you hell. say that? Because there's some of us that's going to say, I'm not going to preach that. I'm scared because if I say what this Bible says, they're going to kill me. Read that part again. Yes, sir. Verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather Fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That's that lake of fire. That helps about that lake of fire. Christ said, you better fear the Lord. So he's saying, telling us what? Preach what I tell you to preach. All them things you're learning about the secrets of the Most High, you better reveal them to everybody. Reveal it so that everybody knows. That way they have no excuse when judgment comes. We're going to say, Malachi, can I nothing? Now. From there, we almost done back to Psalms 91. Yes, sir. We'll pick it up at verse 2, Bishop, again. Yes. Uh, Start at 1 again. Start yes, at 1 sir. again. Psalms 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. That's right. Surely he shall deliver them from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Uh, disease. Go ahead. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. Mm-hmm. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Give me that for truth. Yes, Psalms 119. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Mm-hmm. Going back now. Yes, sir. Psalms 91 and verse 2. I uh, Excuse me, no, verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. 
His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. So the Lord is telling us through King David, don't fear. Don't be afraid. He said what? Read it again. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. That arrow that flyeth by day is war. Those that live to see the war of Armageddon, that's the arrow. Go ahead. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Uh-huh, the disease, disease, go ahead. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. And he's telling you the major destruction is going to waste at noonday. Read. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. So who's that talking about? That's talking about the one-third that we read about in what is it, Zechariah 13, verse 89. That wasn't, this ain't talking about for all Israel, because there's a remnant allotted to die. Hey, give me that in Revelation 20, is it verse 8, I think? I'm yes, shooting sir. from the hip. The one that says, rest until your fellow servants shall. Oh, that's chapter 6, yes, sir. That one, Revelation, Revelation chapter 6, six. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9. Go ahead. And when, and when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. The, 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 the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. There's a remnant of us slotted for death, slotted to be put to death. Go ahead. And for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, doest thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? When you going to send Christ back, send him back to kill all them people. Go ahead. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them, that they should rest. Rest. Right? For, rest. Go ahead. Yet for a little season. Rest for a little season. Until their fellow servants until also. Until their fellow servants also. And their brethren. And their brethren. That should be killed as they were. Should, which should be killed as they were. Should be fulfilled. Should be fulfilled. There's a number that must be fulfilled of Israelites dying in his truth. It never gives a number though. It only gives the number of those delivered in read Zechariah, in case they forgot. I know some of y'all slow. Zechariah 13, 8 again. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. See that? The third shall be left. Go ahead. And I will bring the third part through the fire. I will bring the third part through the fire. What type of fire? Nuclear fire. Armageddon fire. Go ahead. And will refine them as silver is refined. Mm -hmm. And will try them as gold is tried. And they shall call on my name. And I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God. All right. Now let's go on back to Psalms 91, verse 7. Psalms chapter 91, verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. It shall not come nigh thee. Go ahead. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Y'all see that? Only with your eyes shall you see the reward of the wicked. Last chapter and verse, Matthew 24, 29. Matthew 24, 29. And verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. So don't. Get confused with these Christian pastors that say, no, there's not gonna, we're not going through tribulation. Oh, we're going through tribulation. Go ahead. Immediately, after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. Uh-huh, that's their missiles, their satellites. That's what's going to be falling from heaven. Mm -hmm. And the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. That's war, brothers, war. Go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Mm -hmm. And then shall all the tribes of the, of the earth mourn. We're going to be crying. Go ahead. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds the of chariots, heaven. The chariots, what they call, what they call it, UAPs? UAPs? Yes, sir. The chariots of Israel. Go ahead. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Here come. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect. From the four winds, from one end of the earth to the other. That's what we just read in Psalms 91. That's what we read in Zechariah 13, 89. So with that, brothers, we say shalom. All praises. 
Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is